Kaboom! Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Live from Kingston, Jamaica, broadcasting around the world. Around the world. You're watching the Teach Dim YouTube show. Intellectual, yet stimulating. Fair, frank, and factual. And now, broadcasting live. We will broadcast live. Live. This is Extra Class, streaming to the world and beyond. Beyond. Hey, let's go. You know, it's Teach Dim, the number one intellectual blogging panel on the YouTube channel. Good night, everyone. Let me know if you're seeing me clearly. Let me know if you're hearing me clearly. If you're seeing and hearing me clearly, welcome to another episode of Extra Class, episode number 387. Just that everybody who is in the hearing of my voice and seeing my face, you, your family, your friends, your loved ones are all doing well. Some people may be a bit surprised to see a live stream tonight and not tomorrow night, but... Yeah, go on. We just feel the vibes. So, and the vibes. Every day, and the vibes. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. What would they appear? Speak up on the cell phone for the people that may are lucky in and a clock in. Yeah, this is nature. Ellis representing for extra class. Seeing we teach them. Little piece of my story. Piece of extra class story. Yeah. A piece. Of Omar, what you see? Anybody that hear me? Well, go on. All the volume stay. Check, 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 check. Audio check one. Peeps. I say, Omar, I say volume. Someone that know what go on. For the other people in one of the building, all the audio stay. Lock the place in the city To deal with your music, I say Did not have a place to stay but I pray to jump for a uh, father Omar, big up yourself. Hey, teach them never stray. Extra classes for the trying man. Farm well. And trying no man. Working for a better situation. Extra classes for the trying man. And try. And the song we are playing are too loud. I saw Lord and I made phone. A solution. Yeah. Yes, some do domestic work, some are lawyer, doctor, some hustle in the streets. Oh, yeah, Matt Nuff, big up yourself in the family. Good night. Yeah, peeps. Nature Ellis, big up yourself in one of the world of the bro, bro. You know what I mean? Andrew Patterson, Chef Dwight, Michelle, Sharon Hilton Brown. Solutions for home improvement. We need some of that in you know, a solutions for home improvement. I don't know if you're not over there, Gui. You understand? Aretha Francis, me always, when I say Aretha Francis, me almost always say Aretha Franklin. <laughs> Be impressive, Lady Janet Brown. Peeps, speak up on yourself. You understand? Um, so, as I said, the street kind of full of foolishness and you know what it goes. So, we just have all our vibes with the peeps, them, as Mr. We, we, we are trying to make up for some last streams that we we missed. So you know what I think. Um one of the the topic and issue that is still going very strong since we spoke. Good night, Lady Roberts. How are you, Miss Curran? Rosie, good night. Since we spoke on Thursday night, is the whole crab circle situation. And it is getting to a stage now where the lady, Miss Nadine Francis, who recorded the very unsanitary, distasteful, nasty video and published it, she has been receiving threats and in some instances death threats. From who I can't say, but I would assume that it is people involved in the whole crab circle situation. And um, I don't know if it is directly from anybody who also vent there or it is people close to people or what. But based on what she said in an interview with journalists, I think from Nationwide, she is being threatened. Now, I also saw where Miss Alice, who is the vendor that was captured on video, defecating 
and wiping herself in very close proximity to where food was being prepared and shared has come out to say that she's not nasty and she had an emergency and um, she had to relieve herself and them something there. So she's, she has also gone on record to say it was the first incident of that nature. However, Miss Francis is disputing that as she showed other clips of same lady, Miss Alice, doing the same thing at the same location before. Apparently, Miss Nadine has been talking to her about said situation and it has continued and apparently she got frustrated and decided to publish one of the videos. Yeah. Um, in the video that is making the rounds with Miss Nadine, she has stated that she's in fear and because her life has been threatened and she has been seeking audience with the mayor for the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, Delroy Williams, Senator Delroy Williams, he said that he is taking the matter and was not available when she, he went to her office. I don't know, but something, something, something. So let me read something before. So Kingston Mayor says death threats against the crab vendor taken very seriously. Mayor of Kingston, Delroy Williams, says the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KSAMC, is taking very seriously death threats allegedly made against the crab vendor. Crab vendor who video recorded a colleague relieving herself at a stall at Hero Circle. So the Kingston and St. Andrew Health Department closed a popular food spot on Thursday after the video of the unsanitary activity emerged. It was also disclosed that, among other things, the area renovated last year lacks adequate water and bathroom facilities. Now, when I spoke on Thursday night, I said that I, it, I would be hard-pressed to believe that there were no sanitary conveniences at said location. It has been revealed that there are no sanitary conveniences at said location. That in itself is an issue, but it don't negate nastiness. Now, when the location was renovated through collaboration with Jerry and Nephew and the Municipal Corporation in 2022, apparently there was no... I don't know. I can't, I can't find the word. There was not a situation where those involved in the renovation saw the need, I assume, to erect even a porta potty. Zane, I saw where sinks were, were installed and tanks placed there. I'm hearing that the tanks that are there, a water pump was also installed, but that pump was stolen by thieves i suppose but you can't have a situation like that where so many vendors are congregated where food is being prepared and served and the vendors are unable to relieve themselves yeah so that has to be treated with and that can't just throw under the carpet either because that should have been there from the beginning you understand? Good night, Tanil. How are you? It's good to see you. Kirk, kick rocks. Pick up yourself in a broski. You understand what I say? Um, Purple Royal. Blessings. See? There, there, it cannot be in 2023, we have such a popular food outlet, if you want to call it that, our food spot, where thousands of people visit each week. And because of a lack of vision and insight and will and desire, I don't know, Nobody saw it fit to install sanitary conveniences at the location. I mean, for even the vendors, not the vendors, the customers who stop there, sometimes a man want to relieve themselves or an empress want to relieve herself. You, know? you understand what I mean? So, like, that, that is just visionless, if you ask me. I saw where Jerry and Nephew released a statement yesterday saying that. The memorandum of understanding that they signed with the municipal corporation, it was not for the erection of any infrastructure per se, but to give the area a facelift and such. 
So it was not their responsibility to install or erect any sanitary conveniences. And those questions are to be directed to the municipal cooperation. This part has been there for, for, for decades. Yeah. And it would have um, served under and through various political administrations. And at no point in time you are telling me that nobody within the municipal cooperation, no mayor, seeing whether Desmond McKenzie or Angela Brownberg or Delroy Williams or whomever else has served as mayor for Kingston and St. Andrew in the past, saw that there was need to erect, as I said, even to get a porta party there. Like, it would suggest to me that this should be common sense. Yeah? So, at for no time, at no time should it be lost on us that somebody dropped the ball and the area from the get-go was in need of this. Now, that said, I'm going to understand me clearly you now. There is no excuse for what was depicted on that video and the subsequent videos. I understand that emergencies will happen. You understand? But even if Miss Alice had an emergency, Zane, and she was not able to move from said location in time before she messed herself up. You can't be cleaning yourself, dear sir. So even if it come down upon your dear sir, you cannot clean yourself, dear sir. One. There's no justification or rationale that can tell me otherwise at a one. Secondly, just observing the initial clip that was released, it appeared to me that this was not the first such occurrence there. Everybody was just going about their business just the same. Somebody was sharing food there, so somebody was preparing food there, so... In foot, like it just seemed too, too regular. Eh? Next thing now, <sighs> Miss Alice has sought to say, you know, what I mean, she's not nasty and it is the first time. However, Miss Francis is saying otherwise. No, this is a clip from posted on. Twitter by Nationwide, and in this clip, Miss Francis is stating her situation, and she come with her receipt. She have other videos. So first and foremost, hopefully you guys are able to hear and see what is going on here. Um, hold on, let me get this look out. Friday, Thursday night, I had some issues with this. Zane. So first, let me know if you are... You are going to see it, but let me know if you are... Well, go on, yes, sir. And I'm going to say, Oh, me, no, I can't come out the back of myself. Eh? What a trouble, me? So let me know if you're seeing and you're hearing first and foremost before I proceed. Oh, one of them. Because I suppose I have no way to finance Regular occurrence. Um, yeah, so let me know if you're seeing and hearing Miss Francis. What a pie, don't me grab up a gun and no gun. I'm going to tell a phone to you, Shane. I want them to put on my uniform. Okay, so they're hearing. All right, so let's play this. So this is the lady who recorded Miss Alice and shared it. Apparently, she is frustrated. She has grown frustrated with the situation that exists there. And she has since been receiving threats, she say. So, let's see. I'm a part of the system. 
Yeah, that's what I want to talk to the mayor. I want to talk to the mayor. I go away and go back from the office and say I cannot see him. I can't be afraid to come out because my life has been threatened. Social media for the enemy. I wrong for release the video. I know I'm wrong for release the video. I don't wrong for release the video. I'm being threatened me again. Being threatened. I mean, you have set me up, so I said, I buy a hot beer and drink with some salt. And by me, if you reach to the bathroom, I start feeling. And then I take off my clothes and go, and go down on my knees and wipe up myself and come back up. You've never been in a situation where it come down on you and you have to just do it I inside? Of course it's happened, my brother, of course. Oh? Of course it's happened, first. Yeah, yeah regular practice. I'll tell it. Look. This are the this are the video when she this is a white clothes, right? Mm -hmm. This this is a different one at the same spot. Mm -hmm. At the same spot. Mm -hmm. You see it? This is our what That's color this? Color. This is a different color. This is a different color, a green top and a tight. This is a different color. At the same spot. At the same spot. So I so like that. That could have been a lie. Mm. Have you ever said anything to her about it? Her practice? Majority of the time, me I say, mind the shop. Like, if you come over for you. And by, and, 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 and by the stalking, by the stalking, it's not going nowhere. It's not it not going nowhere. It's not going nowhere. So, I told Mr. Blame, I come for me and me. So, I'm not going to blame for nobody. Yes, peeps. So you heard there from Miss Nadine Francis. She is a videographer. She recorded and shared um, out of frustration, she's saying, as she has been trying to talk to Miss Alice about her using the food court, the food serving, cooking, preparing area as her toilet. Those are three different clips of three different occasions that Miss Francis showed Miss Alice relieving herself at the same place that she was caught doing so recently. And if you listen, Miss Alice, it would suggest that her mother, before her, cooked and sell there, because she's saying that she used to go there to put on her uniform, suggesting that she got dressed there to go to school. And she has taken over from her mommy. So she has been there a long time. And um, she apparently has been talking. And no improvement has, has taken place there. And so she decided that the best way to treat with it was to go public. Some people are saying that she should have gone to the municipal corporation or the health um, department. or I don't know. I spoke to this specifically Thursday night saying that, you know, sometimes we, we, we have this video culture, but this was a good thing to video. You understand? As to where it was released, then some people may have an issue with that. But I am happy that she recorded it. See, in, in Jamaica, we are so used to foolishness that when you have somebody who is trying to do the right thing, they often come on that fire and scrutiny for doing the right thing. And, you know, before I go any further, Miss Miss Francis and the five boys from BB Coke High School who took their friend to get medical treatment, you know, with situations like these, it is still suggesting that all is not lost and there are still people who... We can look to, you know, for signs that all is not lost. And the lady sells there. She's a vendor there, probably before even Miss Alice. And um, she is trying to treat with the situation before now. She has decided to treat with it how she did. And she is now being threatened. Um, them need... Stern with running water. Agree. 
um, LS saying a, there are tanks there you know, there are two big tanks there with with a couple um I have them clips there you know but me, them them piece 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 so we can't even use it but apparently they stole the pump for the tanks there so I'm not sure what is the situation with actual running pipe tap water but I know there are no bathroom facilities there and that has to change that should never have been the case see but for the situation now with Miss Francis you understand? As I said, I don't know who threatened her or who is threatening her. But I sincerely hope that good sense prevail, you see? And them leave Miss Miss Francis alone. You understand? Because truth is right now, if me if when you open up back, if me forgot to go buy anything, is Miss is Miss Nadine me I go buy it from. I mean not even buy it because me want. I mean, I go buy it for support Miss Nadine. Because she has done a very noble thing and she said something that is very profound. She said she knew that if it was shut down, she would be affected because she sells there. So she was willing, she was willing to suffer for the greater good. That is extremely noble. We don't have many people among us who are willing to do that. You understand? Where they are so affected in order to achieve the greater good. That is very commendable of her. And it's something that should be looked at and admired and lauded. You understand? We need to protect Miss Francis. You understand? I sincerely hope that the mayor and the cooperation and the health department are moving with expediency, with alacrity, I think, them two words I can use. Yeah. And um, not only to treat with the infrastructural deficiencies that are there, but also to ensure that Miss Francis is, is protected for whatever that is worth. You understand what I'm saying? So it's sad. It it's really sad. As I said, it it, it is <laughs> You know, we live in a in farmer for dead type of culture, and so many people are afraid to do good these days because many people will now ostracize and chastise and criticize and crucify you for doing the right thing. Yeah, that is the type of atmosphere and environment we currently exist in, you know, where instead of being lauded and praised and appreciated for doing the good thing. It is the bad that is normally highlighted and people who are trying to do good things criticize and ostracize and vilified. Yeah? Strange. Yeah? And again, to Miss Alice now, who is parading around saying that it is the first time it has ever... As I said, if... It, it, it accidents will happen, emergencies will happen. You understand what I mean? And even if she messes herself up there, she cannot be cleaning up herself there. At no point in time, she can't justify that. And as I said, no one, nowhere, at no time, can try to rationalize or justify that to me. Me go run away, move with that. So if you, if if the, if if you unfortunately cannot. You understand? All it. And it happened there. You move somewhere go clean up yourself. You understand what I mean? So when I say the accident can happen, it, it can happen. See? But you take away yourself from said location, knowing what is done at that location and the implications of what you are doing at that location Take away yourself, go clean up yourself, man. You cannot be cleaning up yourself there. And to me, matters worse, based on the videos that Miss Francis are sh um, um, showed in, in, in her interview, it is not the first or second or third time. And now, Miss Francis, while she has also lost her ability to earn seeing that the place close on and affect her she now is being vilified and even worse threatened for doing the right thing 
who knows how many people have gotten sick a few days after consuming whatever at Hero Circle and don't even know what the cause. We, we don't know, you know. Maybe it has never happened, but perhaps it has happened. And again, whilst the authorities cannot escape taking responsibility for not having any sanitary conveniences there, Miss Alice, it's very nasty. As a big woman. And then, the lady now, who has done the right thing, people are making out her to be the villain in the story when she's actually a hero, a heroine. Yeah? <laughs> Wanna be see, as a human being, <laughs> Jaja. Nasty and lie, Fabian. That is it. Yeah, Bella Ivy, I don't disagree. I don't think Jerry and if you should take over the government's responsibility. They did a very good job in treating with the aesthetics of the area. And even before Jerry and nephew and the municipality signed that memorandum of understanding in 2022, bathroom facilities should have been there from the beginning of time. From that era became an organized pot for the preparation and con the consuming of um, food there, seen as a permanent location, a bathroom facility ought to have been built. Hmm? Again, our political representatives have failed us. How many times are we going to point out these failures? When are we going to hold these people responsible? But whilst we are beat the politicians, um, Miss Alice, big and nasty. Um, big up to Miss Nadine Francis. As I say, anytime I open back, my personally I go down to go seek out Miss Francis to make sure you know so I appreciate her. I probably don't eat nothing there, but I'm gonna make sure so she can actually buy back some of her goods for the next day and few more days. Many people have taken sick and died from eating contaminated street food. That is not new. They've never put no bad to when Obama did pass through. I don't think so, Richie. Else you then still be there unless them take it up to your garden yard. And I implore anybody who, when the place open back, even if you're not buying nothing there, Zane, make Miss Alice know, not Miss Alice. Well, if you don't want to make Miss Alice know, she's nasty, that's on you. You understand? But make Miss Francis know, sir. We appreciate the noble deed that she has done and the sacrifices that she has made. Because as I said, one of the most profound things that she said, she said she knows, she knew that if the place was locked down, she too would have suffered because she works there and she was willing to sacrifice that, her bread. Strange country we live in now where good deeds are castigated and bad deeds are praised and highlighted. Crazy. Think about it. Me tell us when 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 the, 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 the robbery in Mandeville of the Scotia situation happened, there were many people, even people who people did videos glorifying and praising and bigging up the gunmen. I haven't seen a video where people are loud and are big up. Miss Nadine Francis, I am yet to see it. Maybe it is there and I've missed it, but I haven't seen it. And why am I not see it if it did it? Because it hasn't gone viral. Because of something positive. 
positivity really goes viral in this day and age. The more negative it is, the more popular it becomes. Hmm? <laughs> hey, Kerry, how are you? Miss mm, Marcia Smith, good night. Miss Francis has to be protected. And, and I sincerely hope to, let me put this out there. I sincerely hope that nobody is foolish enough to let these talk and what has been said take life and anything happen to Miss Francis. Because uh, I am sure that if anything happened to Miss Francis, it has the potential to snowball and escalate and get out of control. I'm going to leave the lady alone. She did something very noble, very courageous, and she has made a sacrifice for the benefit of you and me. People who have purchased things there before and had intentions of purchasing there again. You understand? Ah, oh boy. These are some serious times. All I can see around us is... I need a double plate. You know. Father Ainsley Allen, good night. You see me? Um, mm. Boy, DeAndre, apparently they are, they are threatening her, you know, sir. So, I, I, I guess so. And in this, this, these times, you can't take no threat too lightly, you know. She should be... Nationally recognized, in my opinion, my friend. You understand? So I hope that the people them who have been sending threats to Miss Francis understand say a foolish is the do, and they probably don't want to open that can of worm because I suppose that Miss. Francis now is viewed as a hero in some parts and some people will not allow anything to happen to her. And if it does, they wouldn't be willing to make it just slide. So I'm going to take this opportunity to encourage good sense prevailing. Let me put it that way. You understand? Yes. And well done, Miss Francis. I appreciate what you have done. And I'm certain that there are thousands of people who likewise appreciate the noble deed that you have done. Yeah? Big up yourself. And for the fools, them now, we are threatening Miss, Miss Nadine. You know, move. Move. Leave the lady alone. And stop defending nastiness. You understand? There was a video that came out very shortly after the first video where people are cuss who oh, video this something. Eh? Yo. <laughs> right. So I felt that it was very important that I address that situation again. Seeing that it continues to develop since we spoke on Thursday night. And in ways that it shouldn't. We live amongst people who... They must mad. I'm mad. They can't. But I mean, I know. I really hope so, Bella Hyphy. It, 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 it would be a missed opportunity to highlight positivity and nobleness in this country. So I, I sincerely hope that those who are able to make it happen, make it happen. Yeah. And as I say again, I would encourage my, you know, I'm normally telling you what to do. I often live in a life because that is not my place. But I would take this opportunity to encourage those who are present and appreciate cleanliness and good hygiene and nobleness whenever you are in the area when the place is 
up and running. See, out Miss Francis, man, make sure you know say, she's appreciated. And again, as I say, you know, must eat nothing there. But there are means and ways. You understand? An encouraging word. Thank you. You see me? Mm. You should deserve it. You understand? We, as citizens, have the power to make this country great, you know. You understand? We have become comfortable in leaving that to our political representatives and elected representatives when the truth of the matter is that we hold the key to unlock, unlocking the potential of this country. Not our politicians, you know. We, the people, we hold that key. And this is a moment in time when we should all be getting behind Miss Nadine Francis. But you have some people who decide that, no, we are going to get behind Miss Alice, I hope she shit on someone. For, excuse my language. I know it's a family type of channel and thing. You know what I think? Sometimes you have to start the thing how it go. You understand? So for those people who are get behind Miss Alice, I hope that she have a few of them emergencies there with you behind her. It's like I couldn't sense up about it. When are we going to stand up for what is right around here and run with people when they're wrong? And I like people who are doing good things. You understand what I say? I'm telling you, so we have the people in Jamaica, whilst we are not willing to accept it, are not far from being the biggest issue face in the country, apart from corruption in the political directorate and lack of vision and insight. Yeah? Because we don't really want nothing good enough. As I said, we always talk, oh, we like the idea of good, but we are not willing to do anything to achieve said good. You see me? Mm -hmm. Here's an opportunity. You understand? Hopefully, before Monday, I am able to get a contact from Miss Francis. And I am not even interested in interviewing Miss Francis or anything, you know. I just want to make sure you know, say, you have people out there who appreciate what she has done. You understand? And whilst her ability to earn is tied up in the closure, I am willing to make sure say, Miss, 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 Miss Nadine can survive as far as I can go until that. You understand what I say? She deserves it. You see me? She has made a sacrifice that is beneficial to me. You understand? So I am willing to make a sacrifice that is beneficial to her. So if anybody have Miss, Miss Francis' number, please feel free to let me have it. It's not a problem. You understand? It's a sort of thing going on. You see me? Because I'm sure that, you know, some of these vendors rely on the sales they make to survive and feed their family on a daily basis. And as such, we don't know how long the closure will be and how long Miss Francis will be unable to earn. So I think there is a situation where those who are in a position to assist her, I am sure should be grateful. You understand? So, yeah. Uh, Miss Karen, what you say? Now? What am I to stop with? The new wave, big up yourself. DJ, Uncle Phil, Manas, Mahatma, blessings. Yeah, man, so that's that. Um, and and, and, and that just my two cents that. And not everybody will share my views and my opinion on, on this situation. But that's fine. I may very well not share yours either. So that's okay. You understand? Yeah, man, but... Mm. Um, I am not even certain, you know, Shanice. That's a very good question. I am not ex I I know you sure she could in, in terms of the 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 cause you can be arrested and charged for urinating in public spaces. So I suppose she could also be charged for defecating in a public space. I am certain. So I don't know what that side of the coin speaks to, to be honest with you. So I don't know. I am not in a position to speak to it with any authority. So I'm going to know. Mm. 
Yeah, man. We were talking about the crab circle situation, Uncle Phil. See, where the lady was videoed defecating and cleaning herself. And now the lady who videoed it is being threatened and these things. So that's what we were talking about. You see me? Um... Boy, I mean, I know about that still enough for other Gaza nation. I mean, it's <laughs> funny that you say that. Either. It is always easy on the outside looking in. You understand? And having been a leader in my, in my field of work before, you know, the, the heavy is the head that wear the crown, yeah, sir. So it, it, is, it is what I am not afraid to do, though, I can tell you, is to make the decisions that have to be made irrespective of how people will feel. Because in making this decision, it is always a professional decision. It is never personal. You understand? And people will be people. If you do your job, then we're not have to have the issue here. Zane, and when I fall short of what I was supposed to do and I am dealt with by my supervisor or superior, then we accept it and move on as a man. You understand? I just saw the thing about, you know, a friend thing and them. Yeah. And 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 we tend to try to be in a position where we see the thing for what it is, yeah, sir. And be real to the thing and keep it moving. You see me? Mm. Teach him, have you ever considered entering public office? <laughs> Bella Ivy, good night again. Uh, I have spoken to that recently a few times. Um, when I was a boy, yeah, at this point, no. You see me? Yeah, man. So, yeah. Um, Jamaica Porn Service, big up yourself. So, we talk about some other things we affect the country, then we talk about some other things we affect the country, we talk about some other things we affect the country. It's crazy about you. Man killed two students among four injured in shooting off at JDF Kingston checkpoint. Let me read that again so nothing is lost in translation. Man killed two students among four injured in shooting off JDF Kingston checkpoint. So a man was killed and at least four others, including two female students, injured during a shooting involving members of the security forces in the vicinity of an army checkpoint in downtown Kingston last night. The incident happened along Oxford and the Beeston streets at approximately 11 p.m. Um, am I to ask you that these are... Well, I don't know. Um, the Independent Commission of Investigations has said it has launched an investigation now. Indicom, which is a state oversight body for the security forces, said members of the JDF and Jamaica Constabulary Force confirmed that they fired shots in response to being shot at by men traveling on motorcycles, according to a statement that was issued earlier today. Indicom named the deceased as 23-year-old Marvin Cummings. It says two of the injured people are female students under the age of 18. Their condition is not known. Indicom says its inquiries will seek to identify and clarify the circumstances of the incident. The incident scene, which was processed by Indicom and the JCF scenes of crime, is extensive as it includes both a marked JCF service vehicle Pursuit as well as an alleged exchange of gunfire at the checkpoint, the agency said. No over 50 spent casings were recovered and no firearm have been reported as recovered during the shooting. Uh, yeah, so I am not able to provide any more detail as to this situation. Um, this is the only information that I have been able to, to glean. And um, as... Uh, Time goes by, I suppose, more information will become available. You know, Indicom is investigating and, um, yeah, one man is dead. Four people injured. And Jamaica. So I don't know what was the genesis of the situation, but it is suggesting that the security checkpoint came under attack and the fire was returned and... We are here now and I uh, don't know. Man shot dead while getting hair cut in Kitchen Town, yet to be identified. So the police have yet to identify a man who was shot and killed while having a hair cut inside a barber shop in Kitchen Town, St. Catherine, on Friday. Now, residents of Bendon District 
where the incident happened say the shooting created a lull in business activities heading into the weekend. I can imagine. Nobody knows this, nobody knows this man. But the killing has really touched the community deeply, said Paul Campbell. A resident report, well, reports that at about 3.30 p.m., the man was getting a haircut when he was attacked by an unknown assailant. The gunman reportedly shot him several times in the head. Wow. The police were summoned. They transported him to the Spanish Town Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Now, a motive is also yet to be established and the St. Catherine North Police are investigating. Um, it's kind of strange that one man who nobody know in one barber shop a trim in one community. You understand? That kind of strange, like, but normally people trim a barber where them know and them something. It's, I guess, I don't know. So we'll see what update is provided there. Like, the whole of a murder, murder thing, like, I, I remember not doing any news Tuesday and Wednesday, primarily because of the amount of murder stories that were involved. Like, me just couldn't bother sit down and script the news, having read the articles, then record the news, then edit the news. Like, I mean, just, just leave that. Leave that alone. You understand? It, it was just too much. See? And, and I have skipped streams before because it was just too focused on... It's depressing, man. It is really depressing. You understand? Especially if... So why and, and, and this is it. Whilst covering these stories, there's always the potential to earn financially from it. But truth is that I have other things on the channel where I earn financially from. Some of the need for depend upon covering everybody will get murdered run of them part, they run of them part, they run of them part, they run of them part. You understand? And while it is not an attempt to dumb down what is going on, because I'll never do that. I will always be one of those persons who will be pointing out the foolishness we are going on in the country. But for me personally, as an individual, it just gets a lot sometimes. Yeah? That is why at one point in time, I stopped cover murder stories in my stream totally. Zine, but we just have mentioned these and keep it moving. You understand? So, yeah, it, it probably don't affect some people because I don't know how they view their country and what they want for the country. But for me, who, as I have always considered myself a patriot, you understand? Um, and more, I have always wanted what is best for my country. That is why I have given up myself as an educator for, for practically two decades. Yeah? Mm. So we don't just talk it, we do it. You understand? I struggled as a teacher financially for years, you know, man. Monkey money business, but we did it because teachers were responsible for who I became. I don't know what I would have turned out to be without the intervention of a few teachers in particular. You understand? Mr. Williamson, when I was in grade four, them time that we had struggled for read and write properly, and she saw something. I said, my mommy tell us I'm a guy at school for the first time when I was five years old, you know. Five, big, tough boy. When everybody got to school every day, I met board wheel chuck and I run up and down with scooter and I shoot bird and I make gig and I sit because them never, nobody never sent me to school. You understand? So, it took a while for me to get up to a level academically. And it was in grade four where she saw something and she kept me back after school religiously, teaching me to write properly and read properly. You see me? And, uh, you know, we did come an entrance and we get through road on one part of go to school and then still a farm fool one at a time and you had Miss Jasmine Williams, she was my social studies teacher and Mr. Carlington Johnson, he was my geography teacher. He was like a brother to us. He wasn't even a teacher to us really. Brilliant teacher, you know, but he was somebody who, I don't know, apparently he saw that we needed 
that type of support. You know, as a big brother, as a father, as an uncle, and he was primarily the one responsible for, you know, instilling some self belief and confidence. And I could not say, You are going, I don't need to start out on the because he was young. He, it was his first teaching job out of college. And we were able to relate to him because he was able to relate to us. And, and it wasn't just me. I mean, the other man did probably brighter than me at the time because as I said, we did still a farm fool. I remember one time we asked stop going to school so we want to select and all, all sort of shit. You understand? So then you had Miss Lorna Tracy. She was my English and literature teacher. She did some very important stuff without even knowing. So I always had that in me that I wanted to be what Mr. Johnson was to me, to some youths. You understand? So I understand the value of educators and the fact that a teacher can make you or break you. You understand? So it was coming out of that that I realized that, here what? These teachers are responsible for what I have become and I want to be responsible for what some other youths become, if you get what me I say. See? So, we decide that, you know what I mean? Even though the money never makes no sense and, you know, as a young youth, you, you want to do these things and do these things. And then, when I started getting children, it, it became even worse. So, financially speaking, so, it... it, it we served our country, you understand? And we enjoyed doing it while we did it. You see me? So we're not just talk the talk, you know. You understand? We want what is best for, for, for Jamaica. See, we have helped hundreds and thousands of, not hundreds of thousands, you know, hundreds and thousands of youths optimize and maximize their potential. We have saved many youths who people deemed unsavable and would have fallen through the cracks. We have straightened out many youths who feel like school at them yard. You understand? So we, 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 we do the do, man. You see me? And, and we wanted to do that because others did that for us. You see me? Yeah, man. Um, so yeah, we, we, we're not just talky talk. So it's not just about, and as I always tell people, if what I do on YouTube was just money, I would probably be rich. <laughs> you understand? Because when we then see me every day, I cover the murder stories, then we are going to trend and get whole heap of views and drive subscription and drive all sort of things. You understand? I would have stream every night, I jump in at everybody's business and I create story when a story not there. You understand? And I, and I cast accusations and aspersions upon people and I deal with people's lives and reputation like a femi. You see me? So it, it, is, it is really and truly. So whilst I benefit from what I do, if it was really money, me and I in the street every day, I dig out the money. You understand? So there's a lot of principle and values in how I approach what I do because me realize say, there are people out there that look on and listen and take the things that are shared on this channel. Not as gospel, but as important in formulating their views on certain things. So I have decided, I decided from early that I will take a particular approach, not the hype approach. So we got substance over hype. That's the tagline for the channel, you know, as some people don't know that. And those things don't just happen accidentally. Like we, 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 we think about them. You understand what I mean? So we, we approach this thing differently. It is not about just hustling a dollar. You understand what I mean? It is not about... Jumping on the hot topic or the next big story or the story where everybody I cover. It is about being responsible to my viewers 
and 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 whilst my viewers will go elsewhere to get that information that I don't give them, and that is fine. Just know so when I turn on my computer, my cameras, or put the microphone in front of me in the studio, I am here to be a voice of reason. <laughs> Some people may not think so. A voice of balance, and most importantly, treating with the facts. Hmm? Substance over hype. That is it. See? So, I'm going to say all of that to say this. I love my country. As I've told you before, I don't see myself teaching outside of Jamaica not one day in my life. Never. I don't see myself living outside of Jamaica either. That is the, the, the love of me after my country. You understand? I will go other places to work, you know. But not to teach. Nobody now get that out of me. A Jamaica. Only my Jamaican students can access that part of me. Being an educator. No other guy can get that. No way. See? So that I what? And I, you know me, then go some place, go interview some people and come back to my yard. I now live now. That, that is the love of me have in my country. And some people may look and say teach, but then that no wise. And that is fine. But that is how I view it. You understand? And I know that the Jamaica that I live in today will not be the Jamaica that I want to live in, that I have wanted to live in probably in my lifetime, but hopefully it will become the Jamaica that I want for my grandchildren and great-grandchildren. You understand? So we do the, 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 the little that we can in our way. You see me? And, and we keep the thing moving. But enough of me. This is not an interview of me. So yeah, that are the situation. Um, eh. I know. I don't know, man. Policeman shot and injured in Central Village. Ambush. A policeman was shot and injured in a section of Central Village, St. Catherine, where he had reportedly gone to visit a friend last night. Ja, ja. The incident happened about 11 o'clock in the area commonly called Compound. It is reported that the cop heard explosions and attempted to leave the community. On reaching his vehicle, a group of gunmen allegedly started shooting at, the, at him. He reportedly returned fire, forcing his attackers to retreat. The cop then realized he received injuries to his back. The, a police team responded to the shooting and found him. So the injured cop, who is attached to the St. Catherine North Police Division, was taken to the Spanish Town Hospital, well, uh, where he was admitted. Normally, I'm not share the hospital name, in about two minutes I read, I'm get caught up in everything, I don't know. You understand? Um, mm. But I don't know who... The officer go around a compound go look for still at 11 o'clock in the night. But me and I go around this still. Me, me don't know. You understand? I don't know if I want to embrace you or what I'm a girl or a family member. But I uh, but don't really go around there. Um, yes, Moonlight. Like, it's something that I am very, very cognizant of. I'm a quarrel about it many times. So I get caught up in the night and I'm still. I don't know why these media houses continue to do that. Um... But I don't think it is safe. You understand? There's no need to tell people which hospital people admitted it. A family member then know them there. You understand? Boss is going to link a woman on a village star. That's not wise, Richie. You understand? Me don't know him or the lady, but I couldn't tell him saying no wise. So I don't know. I hope that the officer, though, his injuries will not be fatal or physically debilitating and and he will be able to recover in the shortest possible time yeah it's a rough out there you understand um mm -hmm. i mean i know you, you can't do what well, i mean i know let me leave that alone yeah k jord one good night um i think it's the first time i'm seeing the name it's good to see you zane DJ Prento, well, yeah, DJ Prento Walker, big up yourself. Mark McLean, Donovan Reese, Notorious B.I.G. Big up yourself, you know. You understand? Moonlight, you know, it's always good to see you. See me? Finar, Central Village is not a normal place. Right, I know I think I said no, it's not normal in a Finar, but I know I said still, bro. So, in the news yesterday, I covered the story in relation to the vice principal of G.C. Foster College being shot and killed at a medical complex in 
Portmore St. Catherine. Um, GC Foster College in total shock over VP's murder. So Friday's shooting death of Gibbs Williams, vice principal of GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport, has left the school community and cricket fraternity in shock and mourning. The 55-year-old Williams, who was a prominent figure in Jamaica and West Indies cricket, was fatally shot in shot about 12.30 p.m. at a medical facility in Portmore, St. Catherine. Now, according to reports, Williams had visited the Portmore Hospital Complex to attend to a medical procedure. However, tragedy struck while he was returning to his car in the parking lot as armed assailants launched a sudden and deadly attack, opening gunfire with chilling precision. The tertiary institution's administrator was struck in the chest, leaving him severely wounded. In a desperate attempt to seek refuge and aid, Williams managed to run back inside the medical facility where he reportedly collapsed. Now, swift medical attention was initiated and he was then transported to the Spanish Town Hospital where he was pronounced dead shortly after arrival. Now, GC Foster Co um, College principal Maurice Wilson was in shock and at a loss for words when reporters contacted him for a reaction. He said, I need time. I am not in the mood to speak now. We are in total shock, he said. Now, Senior Superintendent of Police, Christopher Phillips, who oversees the St. Catherine South Police Division, said they are moving to bring the criminals to justice. As it is now, we have ruled out robbery as a motive, and we are following some strong leads, he told the media. Phillips, who visited the college after the incident, described the mood as somber. Williams has been serving Jamaica's cricket for years, as the strength and fitness coach of the senior men's outfit. He recently served as manager of the West Indies Under-19 cricket team on its tour to Sri Lanka. Now, commenting on Instagram, former West Indies and the Jamaican cricketer Waverlines remembered Williams for service to his family, cricket clubs, school, and Jamaican West Indies cricket and the rest of it. Yeah, um, another educator... Killed in the country, not the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, tenth in recent memory. Um, the police are investigating. Uh, no motive has yet been established. Um, we watch and we'll see what the developments will, will reveal. Um, my deepest, sincerest sympathies to Mr. Williams's family and Colleagues, associates, yeah, set away. Corruption has a stronghold on Jamaica and the reason much of these crimes can continue. That is, that is the fact that that show, Soul Music, good night, Empress, how are you? It's good to see you. Kanaika, how are you? Yes, so now, I suppose many people are here for Deep Roots, big up. Possible sounds that way. <clears throat> News emerged because we have been speaking in subsequent streams or past streams, sometimes slow enough, about the situation surrounding the disappearance of Tashina Patterson and her 10 month old daughter. And Thursday night we spoke about it, there was no more breakthrough in the case. And boom, Friday morning, we hear, well, Friday, the day news started emerging. There was a press release from the JCF where Assistant Commissioner, or Deputy Commissioner Fitzbailey, who is in charge of the crime portfolio, gave an update as to the investigation. And not long after that, news emerged that investigators were at a crime, a scene, a location at the foot of Warika Hills, where they found two bodies believed to be those of the missing mother and child. That has not been officially confirmed as yet, but that is the widely held theory and view. Um, it, is, it was suggested that the bodies both were burned, had burns, and possibly gunshot wounds. Still can't confirm that either. Um, but yeah. Also, I covered in a newscast a few weeks ago. 
a post made by <clears throat> one of Paul Wells. By the mother of one of Paul Wells. Child. Leoda Bradshaw. I think her name is. Where she went at length. Because she was being accused. Of being involved in the disappearance of Miss Patterson. And she went at great lengths. To suggest that she was not. Um, turns out that she was. One of four people arrested. Even before the bodies were discovered. Yesterday, in relation to Miss Patterson's and young Paul Wells' disappearance, I remember saying on Thursday night that <laughs> it's a long time now for a mother and such a young child to be missing, and um, we're hoping for the best. Um, unfortunately, it never worked out that way. But before the arrests were made, the, um, the bodies were discovered. This is what DCP Bailey had to say. In the light um, of the... Let me share my screen. In light of the misinformation swirling in the public domain regarding the disappearance of Miss Sashina Patterson and her 10 month old child, I deem it necessary to provide to the public the official brief at this time. On Saturday, September 9, 2023, a missing person report was made to the police at the St. Andrew Central Division regarding the disappearance of Miss Sashina Patterson and her 10 month old child, Sahara. Hallwell from their home at 3 Galmore Drive, Kingston 20. Since then, this investigation has morphed into a very complex case of kidnapping and conspiracy. The quality and potency of the evidence amassed thus far has led us to take into custody four persons in relation to this investigation. One of those persons is Miss Lehoda Bradshaw, a 34-year-old petty officer in the U.S. Navy. The investigation is still ongoing. However, it is at an advanced stage. We continue to appeal to anyone with information to make contact with us. We also continue to engage our stakeholders. The persons in custody will go through a series of administrative procedures before formal charges are considered. At that time, an update will be provided to the nation through the press. As I indicated, there's a lot of misinformation that is swirling in the public. And we think, in particular with Miss Bradshaw, we have evidence that could, we could advance a case at this time. But we want to ensure that we cross every T and dot every I. And so there are a number of things that are ongoing. And so we want to ensure that those have come to a conclusion before we uh, proceed with the formal charging of them. Well, we are looking at a case of kidnapping. Uh, we are looking at a case of conspiracy to murder and other charges that will flow from that. I am convinced when I look at the material that the evidence that we have garnered so far is very strong and very, very can stand up to any scrutiny in any court of law. And I must seize the opportunity to commend the people, the officers who are actually conducting this investigation. A lot of effort, a lot of, it shows commitment, it shows uh, tenacity. Um, I mean, they, it, it shows that they really have um, the, the interests of this nation and the interests of justice at heart. And just as how the family members have a desire to see a closure to this matter, I think the officers are committed to ensure that the family members 
they get closure to what I consider to be an unf an, 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 a very unfortunate um, situation. One that really forces any individual with a conscience to cringe. Mm. I think I have... There's more into this video. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I don't want to see my business. But there's more to this video, you see? Where the DCP address a particular thing that is important, Fitz Bailey. So, uh, that video was posted on social. I think I have the original video. Yeah. In light of the So, let me see. How, how long was that one just now? So, let me see. I have to try to do the maths. Let me see if I can search through it still. Um, Swirling in the public domain. So, I want to share. There's something else there that. Sashina Patterson and her 10 month old child. Um, established. Okay. You will wait. Procedures are considered. At that time, an update administrative procedures All right, go and watch. before formal charges are considered. At that time, an update will be provided to the nation through the press. DCP, usually you would wait until uh, charges have been made to call person's names to make a certain announcement. Just elaborate, if you can, why it was necessary to break from that um, established trend in this case. As I indicated, there's a lot of misinformation that is swirling in the public. And we think, in particular, with Miss um, Bradshaw, we have evidence that could we could advance a case at this time. But we want to ensure that we cross every T and dot every I. And so there are a number of things that are ongoing. And so we want to ensure that those have come to a conclusion before we uh, proceed with the formal charging of an officer. And what, in terms of the prospect of the charges, are you able to say what direction the investigators are looking to move? Well, we are looking at a case of kidnapping. Uh, we are looking at a case of conspiracy to murder and other charges that will flow from that. Hmm. And you're, con you're confident that um, you're confident that of the prospect of laying charges on all of these persons? Well, as I indicated earlier on, the, the evidence that we have is very strong and uh, will allow the administrative procedures to be concluded before we make that determination. As there are, as there are legal issues that basically prevent us from saying much more. There are legal, legal hurdles, if I may use that term. But I'm convinced that we are on the right track. I'm convinced about the quality of evidence and the potency of the evidence. I am convinced when I look at the material that the evidence that we have garnered so far is very strong and very, very can stand up to any scrutiny in any court of law. And I must seize the opportunity to commend them. Oh, when I say the volume low, you can't turn them higher than that because so so this is the raw file from the press from the press release. What you were hearing before was an edited version of it, but he said some more things in this file that I think was important. But since I'm not here, I'm gonna take long to say that door. But I may tell you, just sitting and look at me in my face before I said teach. You know when I hear that sitting there. But all right, so he um he was asked a very very important question as to why. Miss Bradshaw's name was was stated, seeing that she has not been formally charged. But uh, the DCP is saying that based on the misinformation that has been swirling in social media and based on the level of evidentiary material that they have to suggest that Miss Bradshaw is involved in the case, they were able to mention her name. You understand? So my apologies for the people who were not hearing. Uh, as I said, that was 
the raw file with the volume normally i would bring up the volume in editing and stuff so that was the situation read that so yeah um that is where we are that was before the bodies were found zane and for the purpose of clarity miss leoda bradshaw is the mother of one of mr paul will's child miss tashina patterson who was reported missing a few weeks ago is also the mother of one of Mr. Paulwell's child, a 10-month-old princess, um, Sharia Paulwell, I think her name is. Yeah. Um, right. So as I said, a few weeks ago now, short on the heels of the disappearance of Tashina and Saraya, I hope I'm getting the, 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 the little baby girl's name correctly. You understand? Miss Leoda Bradshaw came out and she said some stuff. They are all, well, they're kind of intertwining this article, which I'll read, just for the purpose of context. So nothing is lost in translation. And I think I saw somebody saying I was celebrating Christmas already. This is not really a Christmas tree, you know what it is? The purpose of this. So the lights is really technically Christmas lights, yes. But the purpose of the tree is called a practical. So it is something interesting in the background that kind of holds people's attention. So it, it so you have a few different lightings in the background, lights in the background. So they serve what we call serve as what we call practicals in, in videography. So yeah, long story. <laughs> Don't get into that yeah, so carry a go-go light. I'm okay with that as well. You understand? Um, and they say I'm here Christmas tree. It's not really a Christmas tree. It's just a plant. It's really a fake plant still. Because a real plant I got struggle with surviving in an enclosed space and, and them something. Yeah, but yeah. So this article was published by The Observer. I have the post that Miss Bradshaw made from the time she made it. I kind of screenshot it because, you know, sometimes these posts will disappear. So you have to wise in a street. You understand? Leoda Bradshaw, the mother of one of Philip Paulwell's children, is facing multiple charges in connection with the abduction and suspected murder of another of his intimate partners. 27-year-old Tashina Patterson and well, Tashina Patterson and their 10-month-old daughter, Sharia Paulwell, the police said on Friday. At the same time, widely reported claims that two burnt bodies were found in the Rockford area of Kingston Friday afternoon have not been confirmed by the police of the press time. So as I'm saying that, you know, I don't think that has been officially confirmed, but it is widely believed that the bodies recovered are those of the missing mother and daughter. As a matter of fact, based on my information, um, was she the one who gave the interview? Yeah, I think she did. She gave an interview with the Observer and she made some posts, bro. See? Um, based on the information that I have, it has been said that the bodies were discovered based on information given to the police by one of the three men who were detained in relation to the investigation. And not only that, the information was given. He, the police were probably were reportedly taken. I have to choose my words very carefully. The, it, it is reported that one of the suspects who was being interrogated from Wednesday actually led investigators to the location. Zane, um, and them something, something there. Yeah. Mm. Alrighty, so we shall have now. Somebody just sent me a message. I don't know if I can read it all loud. Let me check on it. Based on something that I just said earlier. Um I would send it over here. So yeah. So I think we can read it. It says, I always respect you since I started watching your program. But listening to you talking about your schooling gave me another level of respect for you. Wishing you lots of blessings and prosperity. Thank you for creating your program. Blessings, my friend. Um, really and truly appreciate the wishes and, and, and the kind words. You know what I mean? Give thanks. So we'll continue now. Um, yeah. Bradshaw was taken into police custody late Thursday evening. And on Friday, Deputy Commissioner of Police, 
DCP Fitzbailey confirmed that she was a prime suspect in the abduction of the two and would face charges. I played the clip for you earlier with the, the press release from the police. He said three men believed to have been involved in the abduction of Patterson and their daughter have also been taken into custody. But it is Paul Wells' long-time partner, Bradshaw, who works with a law enforcement agency in the United States who Bailey was willing to name. She is, quote-unquote, a petty officer in the U.S. Navy. We think in the case of Miss Bradshaw, we have evidence that we could advance a case at this time. But we want to ensure that um, we cross every T and dot every I. And so there are a number of things that are going on. And so we want to ensure that those have come to a conclusion before we proceed with the formal charging of her, DCP Bailey said. See? Now, according to Bailey, the police are looking at charges of kidnapping, conspiracy to murder. And the moment DCP Bailey said conspiracy to murder in that press release, I automatically realized that the police were of the view that Patterson and Paul well was no longer were no longer alive. So that may have flown over some heads, but immediately it became apparent to me that in the purview of the police, the mother and, and young child had been killed. Because he mentioned kidnapping and conspiracy to murder. You understand? All right. So yeah, we show me there now, my last. Uh, boom, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The evidence that we have is very strong and we will allow the administrative procedures to be concluded before we only hear some addition and if it is still. But I am convinced that we are on the right track. Yes, all of that. So now we could talk about some other things. Bradshaw first commented on the abduction of Patterson and uh, Saraya on Sunday, September 10, in a media release and a subsequent interview with the Jamaica Observer, in which she denied having anything to do with the disappearance of the two. The only interaction I have ever had with Miss Patterson is through a brief Facebook exchange, Bradshaw said in a statement. I have never spoken to her by phone, nor have I made any arrangements to meet with her. Any such reports in social media are lies and will be passed on to my lawyer for action to be taken in the days ahead. I have, sir, well, I have shared all information I have with the authorities and I hope their investigation will lead to the safe return of Miss Patterson and her baby girl, added Bradshaw. She later told the Observer that claims Patterson received a call from someone purporting to be her and saying they wanted to meet the baby should be investigated. I'm sure it was. I have never spoken to this young lady. We have never met. How do you pick up yourself? And why would you meet with a stranger you don't know, added Bradshaw, as she noted that reports were that Patterson was picked up in a gold van by a male driver who was wearing dark shades. Why did you mention my name? My information was not public knowledge, added Bradshaw. Now, in outlining the sequence of events surrounding Paulwell, the Member of Parliament for Kingston East and Port Royal who sits on the opposition benches in the legislature, Bradshaw said in May, their 80-year-old daughter was sent sexually explicit photos which were later followed up by email threats and extortion attempts. She said the matter was reported to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and the Broward County Sheriff's Department Internet Crimes Against Children in the U.S., which later reported the matter to the Jamaican authorities. The threats against our children, well, the threats against our child continued for months as the authorities investigated, said Bradshaw. She added that on Sunday, September 3, an email was sent out making threats that personal information on Paulwell would be released to the public. They also made damning threats against our child, said Bradshaw. According to Bradshaw, on Tuesday, September 5, she received an email indicating that Patterson had a child with Bradshaw, with Paulwell. So she said she get this on September 5, said Paulwell had a child with Patterson, or Patterson, vice versa. I spoke to Philip, and he confirmed that he had a brief relationship with Miss Patterson, and it is possible that the child was his, but was not certain as a DNA test had not yet been done, said Bradshaw. This was the first time I was hearing about Miss Patterson and the child, added Bradshaw. 
<laughs> she said she sent Patterson a message on Facebook Messenger advising her that Paul will had opened up to her about their involvement and the possibility that the child was his. I advised her that Philip and I and I would ensure the child is taken care of financially and a DNA test would be done to ensure that Philip was the father of the child. As can be seen in my exchanges with Miss Patterson, there was no anger but just a genuine wish to see that an innocent child is taken care of and not caught up between two parents no longer in a relationship, said Bradshaw. She added, I will continue to work with the local and U.S. authorities to get to the bottom of the threats against my family, in particular, my, in particular our young daughter. I will continue to pray for the safe return of Miss Patterson and her baby and ask anyone with information to contact the police. Hmm. Huh. Something all right. Something all right, yeah. Something all right, yeah. No. You have to be really depraved, really heartless, and really wicked to take the child or be involved or conspire based on the allegations to take the child the life of a child one a 10 month old child and for what i have a distinct feeling that there is more to this situation than has been made public or the investigation has discovered thus far. I have a, a sneaky suspicion that this is probably deeper than meets the eyes and as a mother of an 80 year old girl How do you now become the main suspect in the kidnapping and murder of a 10-month-old girl? And mark you, this is a situation where you two are just like Miss Patterson, a baby mother. Ain't like it is Leoda Bradshaw Paulwell. It is Leoda Bradshaw. What rationale can be given for murdering, kidnapping an innocent 10 month old child? Search or something. Yeah. This child had no role or responsibility in her creation. How then are we here where we are talking about the disappearance of child's mother and child until a discovery was made believed to be this is the child. Eight, 
10 month old child. Such a sweet little girl. How do you bring yourself as a mother a mother of a child that shares the same father with your child who is just 10 months old had no involvement in her creation or existence and you as a mother are the main suspect in the murder and don't feel like me 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 exhort miss patterson out of this in but the murder of a 10 month old child is what really and truly i find I'm not even have no words with this guy, but I explain. Hmm? So let me ask another question now. Based on the allegations, let me ask the questions based on the allegations. So Miss Bradshaw, I'm assuming based on the allegation would have done this because she was upset or probably jealous. So at no point in time did it occur that Mr. Paulwell would be hurt seeing that a child of his was kidnapped and ultimately murdered. So it's not only that it is wicked and heartless and cold, but it is also amazingly selfish. So a mother and a daughter is dead. And based on how things look, there is another child, eight years old, who now may be without a mother for a very long time. No, man, when, when, when it come on to hanging, it's not, it's not about principle. You know my views on hanging, bro. You know me not object to, to having the death penalty as an option in the justice system. Her daughter's sister, Sharon. Her daughter's sister, by all accounts, based on what we know thus far. Yeah? So the little princess there on screen. How do you look at a picture like this. Because I'm sure she would have seen pictures of the child. Based on the allegations again. Because I can't tell us that she's guilty. Because you know, she has not been afforded the opportunity of a trial yet. Zane, but based on the allegations. I am assuming she would have seen pictures of the baby girl. How do you look at this picture now? And want to do anything other than to love this baby girl. How do you look at a picture like this? And have any form of resentment and hate to the point where you feel that it is best to take her life and, by extension, the life of her mother. I am certain that the creation of this child was not through rape. I, 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 I would be more surprised if that was the case. So I am assuming that it was a consensual relationship between two adults, as in Mr. Philip Paulwell and Mr. Sheena Patterson, that created this beautiful little girl. So then now, she said she talked to Philip. Philip admitted that he had short relations with Miss Patterson and that a child may have been created. I'm not sure yet. Based on what she said, because my DNA test not do it. But she was willing, they were willing to take care of the child. Miss Patterson never impregnate herself or breed herself, you want another word. What kind of conversation, what kind of 
conversation was there. It sounded like the conversation between Miss Bradshaw and Mr. Paulwell was very civil, was very mild, and that apparently her anger was directed not at Mr. Paulwell for creating another child with another woman, but with the woman. That, that, that's how it seems to me. But again, I don't know the details of the situation. I am just, you know what I mean, working off the known information currently. That based on what she said, she said she spoke to Philip. Let me find the work. As she said, I advise her that Philip and I, and she, well, on. I spoke to Philip and he confirmed that he had a brief relationship with Miss Patterson. And it is possible that the child was his, but he was not certain as a DNA test had not been done. This sounds very civil to me, I don't know. I advised her that Philip and I would ensure the child is taken care of financially and that DNA test would be done to ensure that Philip was the father of the child. Sounds very mature to me, very, very... Very amicable and, you know what I mean? I don't know. Cordial. Look at it. Look, look at the picture, peeps. Look at... How, I, 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 I can't begin to, to, to fathom how was a human being, how was a mother, how was a woman who has a child that is this child on screen, sister, that you are now the main suspect in this child's death. I see you, Shannon. So, when I just sneak through the back door, I see you. But welcome to class, miss. You understand? Mm. Only a Miss Powell, Kerry. What am I missing? And as I said before, you have to be extremely depraved, extremely heartless. Extremely cold, extremely selfish, and above all, extremely wicked to now be the main suspect in a case like this. I suppose there's the next side of the thing. Is he a married man? I don't know in a Miss Silton Brown. I am not I, I am not able to speak on that. Based on my assessment of the whole streets, you know, the, the, the conversation and the public discourse around this unfortunate development, Mr. Paul, well, is not escaping blame in some quarters because some people are saying that, you know, as a big man, you get mess, mixed up in a them dolly house there. If I have more than one child and my two kids have different mother. So let me put that out there. Um, so the people then when I say, how if you have more than one baby mother, baby mother thing don't really work out like that sometimes. Sometimes the, the mother of your first child, it just don't work out. Then we have to do top of fitness. I'm just saying, it don't, it don't really work out. So sometimes, you know, we kind of put the emotions before we say some things on them something there. You see me? Um, yeah, so I think go. But people are saying that Paul Well is a big man and I don't know if he has been married or ever been married. Um so I can't speak to that. But some people are give it to him. I say, you know, kinda of Dali was business this and you understand. Um Fashina was what, twenty seven and Leoda is what? Not not so sure her age, but yeah. Mm. I uh, know. I told me know about Richie. You understand? I currently take care of two children, sir. So I can only speak. And as, as far as I know, there are only two children with my surname. Does Paul will have other kids than these two? I can't speak to that either in a Kim T. Oh, the, um, Bradshaw is 34. Young ladies. You understand? I suppose Paul Well is over 50 years old, going probably into 60s. I'm not sure his age either. You understand? Um, 
A sheet on Paul well in a man. As in as in Leoda? Kim? So it, it it's a that way. Um then I don't know. Paul well are 60 years old, it doesn't look good for a politician. Um but at the end of the day, Peter, polit every politician is just a man like me and you said we bro. You understand? Um, but I understand that people look to him now with a different degree of how they would look at me and you and Richie. <laughs> See me? I she give him for so 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 um Leoda's child Kim Kim so Kim look like she know everything you know. Leoda's child Kim is is Philip's first child. Whichever way you are, sir, it thinks sad. You understand? Whilst there's no full confirmation yet by the authorities as to the discovery of the bodies, um, it is widely believed based on the fact that the information that I have is that one of the, the, the suspects arrested led the police there. Um, Dalios, the sound more like potty shop business. Yeah. Mental illness at its finest. Why? You know, 61. Say it in. So I'm not sure I'm age to be honest with you, but they must say 60. MS, Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul is, I believe. Okay. People, they must draw for Wikipedia, like, you understand? Mm. It think, why I know. What what really and truly <laughs> some my deepest not like me and you were in the public like, He's in the public eye. Yeah, I understand what you say, Peter. Me, Peter, I get what you say from the beginning of the bro. Me just, you know what I mean? I play, I guess what they call it, devil's advocate. Advocate, I don't know. I don't know why I'm playing that still, but yeah. Zane, let me get the, the, the look of princess off screen. Good night, article woman. It's so good to see you. Why I don't know, Peter? I should open the phone line for that conversation. I know people have a lot of things to say you now. You understand? But if phone them, the phone them even charge. Right now, a chip not even on phone, I don't think. Yeah, son. So it's the next time that um, Philip have his big daughter, bigger than some of those girls. Oh, so Miss Hutchinson now is saying that Philip has um, other. I I would suspect too that he has older children than the one that we're speaking about. I would I would suspect that. So I'm gonna know. Um, Philip has bigger daughter that he fell in love with. Why well, I'm gonna know. <sighs> Why? Absolutely beautiful, Shannon. And not only that, her his his child with Leoda is absolutely beautiful as well. I will not share the little girl's photo as you know, the principal. But I know many of you probably would have seen it already. But it's not for me to share. Um. But. The, the, the two little princesses, beautiful kids, man. You understand? Um, Nick, so I go on. It's just sad to know that life is no longer important to Jamaican people. They have been so evil to everyone. God have a great plan for Jamaica. Answer it. Big up yourself, Father Prendergast. You see me? So, it thing. Why? <laughs> me not even, you see me there? I don't even know if I tell you about the situation. God know. Because it thing, it thing. Kevin Lewis, good night, bro. Big up yourself, you know. You see me, I big up all of the people in my Minnesota. You understand? Me up a grove. Big up on yourself. You see me? Me not even know if you're telling yourself, to be honest with you. God know. See? As these are some of the stories when I tell us a more time. Me cut them out of the news. I mean nobody read the news. And um. Mm. Okay, Miss Hutchinson. I only know the two, the two little um, um princess. See? As in Leoda's child and Tashina's child. So I don't know. He was married and she ran away yesterday. Um, she who? I don't know. Yeah. Um, has Mr. Powell acknowledged a 10 month old child as his? Based on the interviews that he has given and what he has said, yes, um, Jamaica Porn Service, yes. Because he was saying that, you know, it was very devastating and he was hoping for the resolution of this. But based on my understanding, having read a few of the articles of interviews that he did, he has publicly acknowledged that he is the father of Syria. So, but I don't know, brother. 
10 month old what kind of what, 10 10 month old think about it you know how delicate a 10 month old child is how precious a 10 month old child is how innocent a 10 month old child is Of course, you don't know, because everybody in here are big people and a father and mothers already, most of you. So, of course, you don't know, I don't you know, and auntie and uncles and big sister and big brother. So, of course, you don't know. Yes, pick up yourself, you know, bro. See? I guess me ask a rhetorical question. Eh? A 10 month old, you not even want breeze blow up on your picnic. Too tough. Sick people out there. Uncle Sam, why? Sick, 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 sick. Sick is the word. I am one thing that I am sure is sure of is those who are guilty of such gruesome acts. Artless Lady Hutchinson, as we said earlier, man. Depraved man. Wicked man. The boy and Mr. Powell need to leave politics alone. Him living like artists. Alright, some old corner boy. Why father McLean? Why me no know? Evilness, heartless, innocent baby. Didn't ask to be born. Didn't. Deb them. At no point in time. You understand? Sick society. Five and four nine and Mr. One make ten. The Admiral Tibet has Mr. Reality introducing to you. Teach them, no matter how far them they are reach them. Listen to this classic. We are living in a serious time. Yes. Don't let the devil blow your mind. The time is so serious. Can't conquer us and dangerous. Yes. He's only Father, teach them put his trust. The time is so serious, say, can conquer us and dangerous. Move. Yeah. Said all over the world, everyone is in a heated rush. On a bet, it's not everything good for you, good for talk. I don't trust no shadows after dark. They will walk and talk, eat and drink with you. Pretend as if they are with you. But when you think it's peace and safety, it's a some distraction. The time is so serious. Yeah. Can conquer us and dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only in the Father. Teach them both his trust. Hey, the time hey, is hey, so hey. serious. Yeah. Can conquer us and dangerous. Yeah. Said all over the world, everyone is in a heated rush. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Always on the alert because I know that my life is worth. No one will push me around. I'm standing firm and judge a ground. People dying for hunger, and the little children got no mother, nor no father. No, nothing to earn. The more they live, is the more they learn. The time is so serious, can conquer us and dangerous. And yes. He's only in the father, teach them both this jungles. The time is so serious, can conquer us and dangerous. Send all over the world, everyone is in the to do rush. Teach them! You know, from me, I played that song there at first, me, I played the song in the stream. Yeah, man, time serious, brother. I have not heard anything in relation to Paulwell and um, Philip Paulwell since the news of the arrest broke or news of the discovery of the bodies that are potentially his child and her mother. Um, I suppose he may not be in a position where he feels he's able to speak to the media or he may have been advised so not to do. 
Um, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, you know, with these things, them. What? Them delicate. Put it away there, sir. Because the only word that me can find. You see? Mm -hmm. Delicate bad. Yeah, man. Um, t r I know somebody may mention of Paul Wells' gun that was reported as stolen. Yeah, man. I covered that story in past streams. Um, so yeah, I'm familiar with that. I don't know. Too much demons out there. My dad has many children. His children love my mom like their own mother. What in the world? What the world need is love. K Joy, you know, the other night I was saying, and one of the things that I kept saying is that we're not we're loveless, man. We're, we're not in a love, we're not in a love again, man. There's there's no love, man. There's there's just ego and hate and divisiveness and man know yeah. So as I said, I, I suspect that there is more to this story that is yet to have been made public or investigators have not yet unearthed, discovered, or they may have but are not yet able to share. So let me take the opportunity to express my sincere sympathies to the family of Miss Patterson, beautiful, beautiful young lady, too, you know, beautiful young lady in her own rights. You understand? Um, very beautiful young lady. She, I don't know. See? Very beautiful young lady. You understand? Um, mean makeup aside you can't see her beauty out of the makeup so you know what you go um and her young child 10 months old yeah me can't get over a 10 month old i mean i know like i remember when my children were 10 months old yeah how how delicate and precious they were like i mean i know what my scenes window there because right now when i say some things eh? see her here again oh wrong place me i press see See her there again. Oh, the one that gone too wide. Nah, sure. But alright, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to see his window gone. Scenes. Show scenes window. The way that keep on disappear. Yeah. I don't know. But people are come on in here. So you now we are safe, which is true. Andrew Ramos, big up yourself, you know, bro. It's always good for see the man, you know. You know what I mean? Andrew, one of the man, they run it, the movement from a long time, you know. From the devil was a boy. You see me? So, yeah, bro. Things it away. These are some serious times. All I can see around. Yeah, and next <laughs> sad story. Boy, them full here tonight, sir. I don't know. So, my design thing is just that we are talking about what go on. You know by now that upcoming dancehall artist Stephanie Williams artist name stage name medic has been missing for a long time now um there was a demonstration at the conscience outside the conscience ring police station a few i think about a week or so ago now by her family and friends seeking update and answers um the police were not yet able to provide information the dcp bailey on friday addressed the case and he suggested that medics situation may have stemmed from an order that was issued by somebody who is in custody. See? Um, Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitz Bailey says no stone will be left unturned until closure is brought to the family of recording artist Stephanie Medic Williams, who has been missing since August 24. It's a long time. There's a thing we call solvability factor. And in every investigation, we have to look at the solvability factor. 
as a matter of fact, let's let's see what um DCP Bailey had to say. I mean, I need to talk for you. Um, so this is in relation to the disappearance of medic. So this is what DCP Bailey had to say. I want to reassure the public that we apply the same standard to every investigation. That matter that you have referenced, I have also intervened and spoken to the investigators. I have looked at the evidence that is available, but we are still pursuing that investigation. And um, if you know how we do our thing, we don't make a lot of noise when we do an investigation. We investigate and then we speak after. And that is the approach that we have been taking. And we will continue to take this approach um, in all investigation. We investigate and we speak after the investigation. But I want to reassure, in particular, the mother, I have spoken to her personally, that her matter is not neglected. We continue to focus on it and we will pursue all leads and and use all the resources that we have to uh, bring conclude closure because I think everybody wants closure to their case. I just want to point out that whilst we cannot tell an individual how they should live their lives, but one must be cautious with the type of relationship that they engage in. And in that particular matter, we believe that certain instruction was issued by a convict within a penal institution. And we are, we are doing our probe, we are continuing our probe because we want to bring closure to the matter as well. I want to appeal to the public if they know anything about that matter uh, to contact us at 811 311 119. I, I, there's no crime that is committed without someone seeing it. So I appeal to our good citizens and people of conscience to reach out to us and, and tell us what you know. Babes, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind that. <laughs> yeah, um, I suppose this information has been out there um, as... I, I I know that you know some information is is readily available to to you know what I mean some people who want it don't have the links. <laughs> um, I don't know. I know. So yeah, so it is believed that a convict who is currently uh, and Doxy said something. Let me. I think. If he's in custody, then we should know where to find medic by now. No, Doxy, be nothing so. Then probably a theorize that he's involved, but I don't know that him tell them where 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 she there, whatever. Um, mm. I say, man, me scare people, Richie. No nah, man, everybody knows me. Just uh, brother, sometimes you have to you have to you have to add some lightness to it, thing, you know, because it things that are weird. You understand? So more time you have to, you see me? I say, mm, just a light moment. Yeah, man, and, you know, we, we, we see the thing, and we, we talk about the thing there, man. You know what thing go? Mm. <laughs> Big up yourself, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is uh, mm. Yeah, man, but New Wave, I don't know that it's really bust the case. I mean, it's obvious that Sir P gets his information from sources with information. I mean... Uh, it, it's kind of obvious and as I always say you know what therapy does is important because not everybody is able to do that in terms of you know what I mean some people who people know them like that can do certain things so yeah I mean but it's what it is um, he does very important work because you know anything go mm. right <laughs> uh so investigations continue. And 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 I see Moonlight say them sting the slug one. What do you mean Moonlight? What's to stop them? You understand? Man still a care phone go give man a prison and and and, man, and not only phone because why am I not hear myself? Mic check one. Audio check one. Testing one two. Microphone check one. Yeah. Um probably yeah. So 
people must have people get visits in and and people are able to to communicate with people and you know what I think go. Mm. Yeah. But and again, as I said, I, 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 I always try to be careful how I say these things, you know. But DCP barely made reference to it. He alluded to the fact that whilst he can't tell people how to live them life, he's encouraging women to be careful of the relationships in which they get involved in. Because the truth is that some of these relations, you can't just lock them off, you know. And if you knowingly get involved with, and this is not just the medic situation, it is in general. If you know that people are involved in a certain lifestyle, seeing New Year's, are you a serpent? No, you know, so man accused me of that already, bro. Like, convinced, no, sir. <laughs> me not, what if you get so much time to do so much work, brother? No, 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 no. Yeah, that's sad. Uh, uh, um, you have to be careful of the people that you get involved with. Because when you get involved in, in certain type of relationships with certain type of people, you understand? You're not only are there with them, you know, you're there with them lifestyle too. You see? So you, you can't just left the person to, you know, you have to left a lifestyle and sometimes the moment you're in, you cannot get out. You see me? And even if you get out, it will be at great emotional, psychological, and sometimes physical cost. You see me? Teach, side job is being Sasko's brother. <laughs> yeah, without the money. You understand? And thing. Um, mm. I just want to think about my device, man. Yeah, so only for the things that you can play with and, and change up the device. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. And, and yeah, them. So you're, 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 you're up different things so you can use. Uh, so yeah, as, as we say, what Sir P does is 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 a vital importance to to the crime fight because I suppose that helps in 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 some regards in terms of some of the information that he's able to share and thing um is avoid that needed filling and he has filled it very well. So, you know, I don't know that he's always correct in, in, in some of the things that he say, but you know what I mean? He's doing a very, very important job in the context of important jobs. You get it? So yeah, um, his sources are his sources and he's able to tap into it and you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> yeah, so you know, his face big and a lot of a lot of different people and with a lot of different niches can exist and coexist and you know what thing work. So I could talk about some of that thing. What? Yo, to, I, I should have got my bed. You know? I should have did got my bed because tonight tonight Beach is thought allegedly had tight grip <laughs> on fisherman contracted to kill his wife. Beach have tight grip on man. I mean like that. Yeah, and I said, I mean, I said, is that not sound right? You see it? Yeah, I have a whole heap of different article with beach stuff, but I want to kind of capture most of the, most of the, um, most of the, the court proceedings. And then this is not me writing. I read where the, the article, the, 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 the article say, it say, beach stuff allegedly had tight grip of fisherman contracted to kill his wife. Then you want me to tell you like, is, is that the thing say, Beach is thought of tight grip and contract. <laughs> yeah. Boy, it's pretty out in brawling, sir. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> the man who was contract. Me nah, yeah, me, me nah. <laughs> Turn up. Mic check one. Yeah, man. The man who was contracted to kill Everton Beach Stout McDonald's second wife said during his testimony in the home circuit court on Thursday that leading up to the murder of the woman, the businessman took away his phone and periodically left him without the means to place phone calls. The man took away Beach Stout took away man phone. Then Beach had a tight grip on him for two. You understand what I say? 
Denvalin Minot, who is currently serving an almost 20-year sentence for his role in the July 2020 murder of Tonya MacDonald, told jurors, ju told jurors <laughs> and Justice Chester Stamp, who is presiding over the murder trial of Beachy Stout and his co-accused, Oscar Barnes, that he was not happy being relieved of his phone by the businessman. Minot is the second witness to give evidence in the trial after a former employee of Beachy Stout finished giving his testimony on Wednesday. Now, according to Minot, the confiscation of his phone came after a second time meeting up with Beachy Stout in his office at a supermarket the businessman operated in Portland. The witness told the court that his first time speaking with Beachy, sorry guys, I know it's kind of itch me, sorry, sorry, I know it's unprofessional, but I know I sneeze, sneeze, you understand? Mm. The witness told the court that his first time speaking with Beachy Stout was on was one Saturday when he visited the supermarket in search of a job from the businessman. The witness claimed that he had hoped to get a job which entailed offloading goods from trucks when deliveries came into the supermarket. You remember we talked about that part, I think, the, um, Thursday night. However, on the first occasion when he expressed to Beachy Stout that he wanted a job at the establishment, the businessman allegedly lured him into a plot to kill his wife, Tonya. The witness alleged that he was promised $3 million to murder Tonya. He allegedly showed Minot a picture of his wife on a phone. Now, when I left the office after the first time, I spoke to him after that. He called my phone. I had given him the number the same day when I spoke to him in his office. He told me to come and check him in his office. When I went to the office the second time, he asked me for my phone. You know, what, what, what kind of man this here? He took it and then said, you are not going to need this phone anymore. He then said that he will provide me with a phone. <laughs> the witness shared that after leaving Beachy Stout's office on that occasion, he went downstairs to the supermarket and out of protest took up two bottles of rum from a shelf and proceeded to walk out of the establishment Beachy had tight grip on him for two. He claimed that the security guard attempted to stop him from leaving with the bottles of rum. And a bottle of rum... I took the almost hard singer side song. I told him that Beachy Stout took away my phone. I went home after that. Boy, this son gay. He said he spoke to the businessman about two days later when Beachy Stout sent his driver to visit him while he was sitting outside a bar. <laughs> I saw a great Toyota motor car pull up. I went to the car and received a black scandal bag. I went inside the bag and took out a yellow cell phone. I opened the back of the phone and there was a digital SIM card and a Lime SIM card. I walked away from where I collected the phone and I set the chip inside the phone properly, then checked the credit on each man and check in credit. In about three minutes, the phone rang. I really sure, you know, me tell you, I could do it show you know. I don't even hear. In about three, I sure alone me hear that, I said them, I said, yeah. In about three minutes, the phone rang. When I answered the phone, Beachy Stout said, A me, man. A me man. <laughs> Beach is a, a me man. Beach is thought man. He told me to use a digital chip to call him personally. The lady, his wife, that he showed me on the phone, he said I was to use a lime chip to call her. I had met the lady before. I met her one week in 2020 when I asked her for a job for my son, the witness said. After receiving the phone with the two SIM cards, the witness said Beachy Stout called him one day and told him that he was coming to visit him at home. He said he sat on the roadside waiting for Beachy Stout when the businessman called him and told him that he was on his way at the time. I sat down and saw a black BMW coming. I walked towards it and went into the back. According to Minot, when he sat down in the car, Beachy Stout introduced him officially to his wife. The witness claimed that Tonya, who the witness referred to as Mrs. Mack, wanted to buy a gun to kill somebody who had offended her. Mrs. Mack said to me that she wanted a gun to buy to kill the man who killed her father. Mr. Beachstow turned to me and said, yeah, a true she attack. The witness revealed in court that the argument about her wanting to buy a gun to kill the man who murdered her dad was just part of the plot to lure her to have her killed. Oh, <laughs> Punal is the I was taken to Mr. Beachy Stout's home in Dolphin Bay. He said to me that 
she believed our plot. He was telling me that he wanted her dead. He took me inside his yard and showed me around the house and showed me a back fence leading to an empty lot. When I was leaving, he said, I dare say you for walk and jump the fence. He then took me back outside to the gate. Then he let me out. Then he let out the dogs out of a pen and I wanted to run. Who let the dogs up the beach? He said, don't run. Baba boy, don't run. He said, don't run. Minot claimed, sharing that Beach Stout wanted the roughly five dogs to smell him. <laughs> so the next time he came to the house, the dogs would be familiar with his scent. <laughs> After Beach Stout showed him around the yard, the witness said he left and went home. It's like a movie. Earlier, they show. All right, never mind. He claimed that on a different occasion, Tonya visited him at his home and they had a conversation. He said that when she left, he called Beachy Stout, who told him to keep up his act and continue to be friendly with Tonya. By this time, the witness said Beachy Stout had already taken away the yellow phone he had given him to use and then gave him, bla gave him a black banger phone. Give him a banger phone. This conversation, may I have a tune for everything? This conversation was after he brought me to the house. He called me on the phone about two days later and said, I was to bring the phone he gave me. When I brought the phone to the supermarket, I didn't see him. I gave the phone to the security and said, How this man take my phone from me? And now I want my phone and cannot get any. This sound very gay. Me not, me not, me not, this not sound straight. Then I walked away. I went to him again at a wholesale, which, I asked, which is also his, on William Street. I told him I wanted a phone to use because I did not have any. He said, I have a phone for you, but you have to get a chip for it. When he said that, I felt so good in myself, believing that I would get back a Samsung like the one he took from me. Let me read it, like the one him take from me. Me now fix up and read it, me I read what them said. What about enemies who he has? Jerome, who you talk about now? Zane? Which <laughs> me I asked when I would get back a phone, and he said I should go down by Town Talk in the market area. As so apparently, Town Talk is a place where sell or fix phone. Me know. You understand? He said I was supposed to go around there, and I will see a phone shop where he can get anything from that shop if, if he want. I went but didn't get the phone because the guy he sent me to wasn't there, the witness said, explaining that he went back to Beachy Stout to tell him what happened. This, this a man, Beachy Stout have this a man I walk over the whole of Portland. You understand? Couple minutes after I reached home, he showed up in a silver motor car, the witness said, man full of car. He said he went inside the motor car and Beachy Stout handed him a black plastic bag which contained a banger phone and $150,000. He then said to me, put that in your pocket, referring to the money. He did not say what the money was for, but I used the phone to call Beachy Stout and Mrs. McDonald. It dog get 150 grand for pocket money. Put that in your pocket and tell us that this sound gay. The witness alleged that Beachy Stout began to get impatient when him because, with him because he was taking too long to kill Tonya. The, it was at this point that Minot claimed he brought Oscar Barnes into the picture. So Oscar Barnes is Beachy co accused right now. That him did marry the day before the trial sat. He alleged that he told Barnes that the plan was to kill Tonya. As far as the witness knew, Barnes was in on the plan. However, he said after a few attempts to catch Tonya flat footed and kill her, Barnes expressed frustration. Barnes was the one I trusted to do the work because I could not do it. I introduced him to the work. We took a taxi and it dropped us at Beachy Stout's gate. We came out of the car and went into Beachy Stout Yard from the back fence. We sat down inside the yard for about two hours before Miss Mac drove in. She was driving a Toyota bus. She and her helper came out, pulled the grill and went inside. The purpose of going to the yard that night was to kill Mrs. Mac. She wasn't killed because the helper was there and she locked the grill. I explained to Barnes that I wanted a gun to buy for a lady. He said that he had it in Manchonil. I called Mrs. Mack and told her I had the gun for her. She came to pick it up from, from Still Corner. 
Barn said he needed some gas and Mrs. Mack gave him $2,000 to go and buy the gas. Make me last. He went and got the gas and when he returned, he moved off behind him. We moved off behind him. When we reached Zion Hill, he came out of the car and said, Me now nah about to go Manchanil. He said he was going to Boston. He must have the one some jerk put me in before, he, before we could reach Boston, we stopped at a Rasta shop and he went in. I was in Mrs. Mack's car and I sat there for about 20 minutes and could not see him coming. One of his cronies came out of his car and came to Mrs. Mack's car, the witness said. The witness said that he came out of Tonya's car and went inside the building that Barnes had entered earlier. I went behind the Rasta building where an old fishing boat parked up. I saw Mr. Barnes and somebody else, but I did not see the other person's face. Mr. Barnes said them... Mr. Barnes said them the right there, sir, but couldn't take it up because a lady was watching. Mr. Barnes asked me for the money. I had $500,000, which I got from Mrs. Mack and Beach Stout. So, <laughs> so Mr. Won't tell us about the 500 grand. I left from where Barnes was and went to the back. So you see that 500 grand there? A, a Beach give Miss Mack forgive mine at. So Beach basically I give Tonya the money to pay for fear one killing. Bombard star. So the long and short of the story, them did that try to kill her this, but it never worked this. You understand? So the article they kind of condensed and kind of heavy. I'm going to read one different article where I kind of give you a little bit more. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Then Valin Minot. I want to know his story. Him, him, so he kind of details some of the things that were going on. <laughs> the man, Denval in Minot, who is currently serving 19 years and 10 months for a role in the murder, blah, 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 blah. Him say, him no want she forget no gunshot. So BG tell the witness, say, him no want Tony to get no gunshot. Him want me stab her up and cut off her neck, he said. Hmm. All me have to do is just go up at the house with her and wait till she come out of the car. And me kill her in the yard. He recalled being told by McDonald during a meeting with him in a supermarket. Zane, I, so the witness earlier testified that he was reluct that he reluctantly agreed to kill Tony after McDonald told him he would pay him three million dollars, but said he again tried to back out of the deadly plot. I continued telling him me never do it before. I mean, I know how. Tell us his son gay. But he said Beach remained undaunted and expressed faith in him. Yeah, man, you can't, you know what I mean? You can't kill him. Him said, Come on, man. I know you can do it. You are a professional. See, during that same meeting, the witness said Beachy, who was seen snorting cocaine. Let me read that slowly. Him said, Come on, man. I know you can do it. From me, no, from Beach, I know I'm a cocaine. You are a professional, the witness recalled. During the same meeting, the witness said Beachy, who was seen snorting cocaine, accused his wife of stealing millions from his account. Him said the girl for dead. And him turned to me and said the girl hacked $31 million out of my account. He recounted. At the same time, he said the businessman again showed him a picture of his wife and instructed him to kill her. The court further heard that the witness... That the witness... That prior to that encounter, Beach drove him to the house. I'm telling him about that already and them something. And thing, and thing, and thing, and thing. Mm. Now, the convicted fisherman told the court that Beach... <laughs> let me read it. The convicted fisherman contracted by Beach is told to kill his wife disclosed that he and another man had... He had hired to carry out the hit, made two unsuccessful attempts to kill the woman. I'm telling him about them already. You understand? The one at the yard and the one at Manchin Hill, this one. See? So, yeah, that's a go on a beach is to a child. When is the casting for the movie? Which role you want to play, Tanya? <laughs> Tell me the role you want to play. <laughs> the man says the beach is a, a, a snort coke. Yeah, so, so, so far, I nearly $4 million. Yeah, because, remember, say, him did forget $1 million for buy the... I don't remember, yeah, sir. But a four million dollar made the count one at the time. You see me? But Beach went through so much hassle. If you try and kill Tony, just left Tony and I'm a G. Yo. Just 
But I mean, no. Just make sure you go on, man. Divorce her. She'll get some things yes, cause for your wife. But, brother, you're then there road, you know. Yo, I mean, I mean, I mean, I get it still. But for your man, when I take court, then nothing not, not, not impossible. Five hundred k, one fifty k. I think the five hundred k come out of the three mil still in a, um S. Lewis, Zane. But I think there was. I think he was told that he would get a million dollar to get the gun for Tony for kill the man who killed Tony a father. When Beatty Stout don't tell him say him kill Tony a father. <laughs> Separate him now nah, for divorce. Boy, a man just reach a stage where he must say, "Yo, yeah, go on." If 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 me she have her for myself, she have figured dead the answer. You understand what I say? Mm. And that one. Chilling. Till death do us part. But a natural death is said, Anthony. Uh, man kill you. The man is a cokehead, not a killer. Could have deal with the matter more smarter. You understand? I saw the voice of the truth, Daniel. I can't tell it otherwise. See? And then, remember, he might go stand trial in January for, his first, for the murder of his first wife, Miss Mar Marlene. O.C. Petal. Yeah. Beach was, was a living best life here, sir. Because, I don't know. What else to tell us? Mm. All the money in the world. And the man spending the days at plan for kill woman. Then me not understand them something. There. You see me? It's like beach is told couldn't believe that Tony had there with him. And that me, as me telling him, I try rational, me try not rational, me try figure out why beach is told couldn't just leg off at Tony. Like him can't believe that Tony had there with him. And having there with him now. You know the control mechanism where in him tripping and the things start go sideways and he must say, yo, me nah lose yes. The man have too much money for you one good. <laughs> it do you say mama chop him 31 mil. You understand? I don't know. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Yeah, so we spoke at length now. Can we talk about some more things? Because with, with my cuss on different people, you know. Um, we spoke at length on... It wasn't Thursday night. At Thursday night, I talk about... Yeah, I talk about the, 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 the sentencing in the in the Wandan Klansman situation and the the amendment suggested by the DPP and, and so on and thing. And... um. I don't know. So there's a there's an article where, where I need to share. I'm sharing this article because the tone of the article kind of rubbed me the wrong way. You understand? It the, the tone, not a hard question. Uh, the tone of the article rubbed me the wrong way. See? Government to consider amendments to anti-gang legislation. To con to consider. To consider. See? So listen what National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang, and maybe it's just me. Probably me just whole and miserable, but you can't tell me. Probably I'm me. Listen to this. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang has given a commitment, good word, commitment to consider, not good word, a commitment to consider discussions on whether, on whether the anti-gang legislation should be amended, should be amended. In light of concerns raised about some of the sentences handed down to convicted members of the Wandan gang. But Dr. Chang said where the sentencing can be more robust, it is the remit of the judiciary whose integrity and independence are beyond question. Radio Jamaica News reported that Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn is recommending amendments to the Criminal Justice Suppression of Criminal Organizations Amendment Act of 2021, commonly called the Anti-Gang Legislation, to give judges the power to impose a term of life imprisonment as maximum sentence to convicted gangsters. Dr. Chang said the government will await official recommendations from the DPP and the police to see, further, to see where further amendments are needed. 
find so far. We will look at the whole case, in fact, from a police point of view, to review the entire operation and development of the case, along with the DPP's comments and see if this is the part of the article where Rob me wrong now. Listen. And we will look at the whole case, the whole of the case, in fact, from a police point of view, to review the entire operation and the development of the case, along with the DPP's comments. Listen to the part of Rob me wrong now. And see if we have to make legislative adjustments. Mr. Security Minister, sir, with all due respect, what do you mean, if? Then you're blind, so are so... Then you must, I don't know, like, if, if we have to make legislative adjustments, I don't understand what Dr. Chang means about if, that, that, that word they rub me wrong. Richard, let me see the if, I don't bother to read the rest, because I don't even know the rest of the rest of the rest of the top reading, but I can read it together now. While noting that sentencing is the prerogative of the courts, Dr. Chang read, Dr. Chang read, <laughs> Dr. Jang reiterated, <laughs> if the government sees it necessary, if the government sees it necessary to make changes to the law to have stronger prosecution, then it proceed in that re If the minister has welcomed the conclusion of the Wandan gang trial and praised the work of the police investigators in the process, he said their work highlights a new impetus with which the Jamaica Constabulary Force now operates. He added that the successful completion of the trial, despite its complexity, is a good reflection of the criminal justice system, and so on. Now, <laughs> optics is important. Mr. Chang, <laughs> that if I'm but a maybe situation, it is obvious, Dr. Chang, and as again, I don't have no legal background, I don't have no legal training, me is just a layman at talk about some things. But all the brilliant minds that were on the committee that drafted, debated, and passed the anti gang legislation, they failed us. Why? Because, as I said before, a man can be tried in a gang trial. And the maximum sentence for membership is 20 years. And leader is 30 years. There is only one leader of gangs. See? You will have deputies and so on. So only one man stands to serve up to 30 years. If that gang, during trial, it is proven that one man in the gang killed 10 people, he will not be sentenced for neither one of them 10 murders there because the anti-gang legislation does not capture that. And Dr. Changa said, if, or maybe, or might be, makes no sense. And as me tell you again, we spend a lot of time at berate and chastise prosecutors and judges the people, the mafia get the chastisement is our politicians. The elected representatives who craft and pass these laws. Yeah? The tone of Mr. Chang's response is wrong. And that tone, I wouldn't be surprised if it trans transfers itself into the years of the other people that have met it. I don't understand. Like, and as we said, I get me wrong, you know, it would be very unfair to say that, you know, nothing is being done to treat with some of the laws because we have spoken before about the new firearms act that the minimum sent the mandatory minimum is 15 years if you are convicted for illegal possession of firearms so that was treated with recently then there is no discussion about increasing the money the mandatory minimum sentence for murder to 50 years then and there on friday the new bills act was passed into law we are going to talk about that. So things are being done, you know. But again, some of the laws are still way behind and need to be brought up to 21st century 
time in the light they're still in the dark the anti-gang legislation is one such it cannot be that a man will be tried for one murder in a regular trial and he is sentenced to life in prison while you have men being tried in a gang trial where multiple murders have been proven to have been committed by them and not one person is sentenced for one of those murders. It can't make a sense. So this is not an if me doctor chan. This is not an if situation. It is a must situation. If you ask me. You yeah, understand? Me know what the thing got S. Lewis, man. Me understand how the, how, the, how the ships go, man. You see? So, Dr. Chang, you had an, you had an opportunity to, 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 to send a particular message and we are calling for the loss to be updated, but look what they updated it to. Which law are you talking about? The, 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 BL, the BL Act? That, that one you are talking about, Richie? Which one in, in particular? Father Wayne, big up yourself in a broski. Boy, it's hard for disagree with you, you know. You understand? But it, it, it don't make no sense. As it stands now, it makes absolutely no sense. See? Gangs are responsible. BS and the BS and the let me show you something we do now again. Cause you see, as I said, it, it more time you want to look like some me, a me a troublemaker, you know, but let me show you something we do now. Cause as I say, as, as an educator, you are so taught how you develop. First thing is start from your action plan, then it move into your unit plan, then it move into your lesson plan, then it move into your class. I couldn't bother write all of them sitting after one point. I teach the same thing a million years. I find nice, creative ways to teach these things. I don't know how to tell my foolishness. Let me share something with you. Know. You understand? So, a planting, I never I don't know. A planting, I just never my thing after a while. Yes, sir. I have the same plan now. I need to write them back over and over every year. Yeah, I know so the youth them different, but I have the approaches them already. Lock off in my head, but that's the next story for you next time. Um... Let me show you a look of vibration. Watch, watch a style. Zin, we have Bill a look of case. Yes, so. Boom, so. Share that. You know, I see that? That's a made big. I don't know if I mind that. Look what this say. You see red? It says 66%. And a red panic key over here, so. Say, uh, a gang that. So this is saying the murders committed in Jamaica between January 1 and September 30, 66% of those murders were linked to gang activities and gang feuds. You, you, you follow what I go on here? So I can look on that again. 66% of the murders recorded in Jamaica between the 1st of January 2023 and the 30th of September 2023 are linked to gangs. You yeah, follow me, I say? 66%, you know. And every time, every quarter that the JCF released their data, they, the data indicate that majority of the murders are gang-related. So if majority of the murders are gang-related, Mr. Sir, common sense would suggest to me that the laws should be of such that it treats with these murders when these gangsters are held, tried and convicted. And as we saw in the recent trial, nobody was sentenced for any of the murders that was proven in court that these gangs that this gang was responsible for because the anti-gang legislation does not speak to that. So if you keep saying that most of the murders are gang-related and there's nothing to hold these gangsters responsible for under that legislation because you're not going to try every man as an individual murder trial, some of these men will be a part of gangs when these gangs are broken. See? So how come the laws, if this is our biggest problem, gangs, how come the law, the, the piece of legislation will speak specifically to gang, there's nothing in there to treat with the majority of the murders that are being committed in it? Could that not make no sense to me? That can't make no sense. It's like we're blind or we're deaf. Because the data is there to tell you that most of these murders are driven by gangsters and gangs. And then when you hold these gangs, 
stirs and bring them in front of the court. The murders that they are believed to have committed are not captured under the legislation that you had tried it. Some gangsters are tried for murders and are multiple murders and don't get me wrong. Not that, that, that me I said that not go on. But if you are trying to break these gangs and you are trying these men under this particular legislation for whatever reason it is best decided, how the hell this legislation now reflect the, the, the situation in the country where gangs are responsible for most of the murder. Every, if you find 10 years out of data about murders in Jamaica, for each quarter, it tells you that gangs are driving the murders. Yet still, the 2014 anti-gang legislation, which was um, modified slightly in 2021 is not treating with the root of the matter then what kind of sense that make and again me i say as me said earlier maybe a me miserable you understand probably me just all are miserable so you can work it out and tell me if i mean all are miserable or i mean just done so i'm fool i mean i see the situation because if me i look on the data and me i look on the anti-gang legislation and the data say a gang responsible for most of the murders from Wapi Kill Philip until now. And then that piece of legislation is not treating with the largest contributors of murders in the country, which are gangs. It don't make no sense, brother. And then Dr. Chang say, if the government sees that. What do you mean, if? <coughs> So again, maybe I just me, I mean miserably, yes. Sir. Me, 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 as good as me. Cause me I get old, you know. You know, with 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 the age, these things happen. So me, me, I mean, I mean, I problem. You understand? Me is a problem. No man, but if you look, but, but Peter, me get what you say. But if you look at the, the trial recently, it was proven. This, these murders were proven to have been committed by members of the gang. And subsequent trials, same thing. So, it can be proven. And if it is proven, then what's the holdup? See? So, a man who is involved in a murder... And it is proven in an anti-gang trial, in a gang trial, say he was involved. Still, I will get, so, the, him, him is not the leader. Him is just a member of the gang. Zin? So, him can only be sentenced up to, a, if a one count, up to a maximum of 20 years. But then, if them spend three years before the trial start, that three years is subtracted. So, a 17 years that y'all look upon. Then now, the social inquiry report will say, okay, he has been a good boy. He grew up in a church. He went to high school. He got his CXCs. He was working. You understand? He has never been convicted before. So the mitigating factors now are so good that one well, next five more years come off of the sentence there. So we are looking at 17 minus 5, that are 12 years. See? And then they may look at his age and say he may still young, so the possibility for reform is there. So we're gonna take up two more years, so you're looking at 10 years or so again. You understand what I say? So by the time you're done do that, as per the law, he was proven to be involved in three murders. But because of the law, he only going to serve 10 years because the judge cannot sentence him for none of them murder because the legislation does not speak to that. But yet still, every time the JCF releases its data, it will tell you, say, gang warfare and gang feud and gang activity is driving the murders in the country. Then me can't, and as me say, I'm a fool. I'm a idiot. I accept that now. I'm gone. Because it can't, it, I must be a fool. I can't say things set in a real life. Plus, even though the maximum sentence is 20 years, the judge may start at 15 years. Kind of must start at 20, you know.
Yeah, man, me get that Kali. Kali, me get that, man. I understand that. And I have said that before, because I always say, while it is important to have access to the death penalty in the dispensation of justice, the death penalty won't solve Jamaica's crime problem. So I get what you're saying. I mean, agree with it totally. So these things won't necessarily act as a deterrent, you know. But when you're all these men, they should feel it. You can't have a man a sentence him where it can be proven say, involved in a four murders and he might get seven years or five years when everything is worked out. No, no, you know, Peter, because not every member of the gang may have been involved in that murder. But if a four man in the gang involved in the murder and it is proven to them involved in the murder, then they should be sentenced for that murder. But if you have a gang of 33 people, I mean, I think 33 men or 40 men will kill once, maybe, if you get to me, I say. So the people them were involved in a, a particular murder should be sentenced for it. So you're not going to sentence the whole gang. But the people, so when you are sentenced each a man where you know they involved in that murder, in a film set, so up, other than being inv being a member of the gang, you also are sentencing for the murders them that was proven same so involved in it. So it's not the whole gang you are sentenced. So me I say, if we are serious about treating with the crime situation in Jamaica, the laws have to reflect the times that we are in. Because look pan now, so, so I could work it out. So a man who in a gang and him involved in a five murders. And one man, they are road where involved in a one murder, get 35 to life, while a man who involved in a five murder get seven years. <coughs> una understand the situation we are talking about? A man may be tried for a solitary single uno one murder, one, and him get 35 to life. While a man in a gang trial may have killed six people, but him only get seven years because the law does not speak to an individual murder sentencing in a gang trial. I wonder if you don't understand what really are going around here. Under no circumstances that can make sense. And Dr. Chan come to talk about if the government say I need. What do you mean if the government say I need? As a matter of fact, after the case done Tuesday, them should the next time Parliament meet, them should then draft up the amendment, them are ready. Miss Donnet Thomas, good night. I am so proud of you and your growth. Big up yourself, you know, lady Donnet. We give thanks. You understand? And, and as we grow, look at all our public grow a little bit smarter and wiser and a little bit more. What the word more I use? <sighs> Temperate. You understand? We know we know we don't make emotions drive. We have try to deal with the facts. You understand? We don't always everybody cup of tea because we don't ask everything with them want you. But we just try to be fair. Zin? So I that me I try to say in a dungeon. That is what me I try to say. It thing no make no sense, bro. One man will commit a murder and spend the rest of his life in a prison while one next man commits six murder. But because he was not tried for murder but tried as being a member of a gang, even though it was borne out in court that so him commit the eighth murder, him don't get sentenced to not even one of the murder because the laws don't speak to... Yo, yo, we... And then some of the some of the high profile names were, were Miss Perfectly Imperfect share in the stream Thursday night that were a part of the committee that formulated the anti gang legislation. Yeah, like me always telling us, you know, we have this tendency in Jamaica to, to, to be frightened for people with, with letters in front of them name. Doctor this and this, this, that and letter after them name. Sometimes them man there. No make no sense, man. Because you can't tell me, say, at no point in time, nobody on the committee never realize, say, we have to capture that in a this. And even if you never realize at the time, there have been a number of gang cases leading up to the recent, the most recent one. Where the same thing has happened. Repeatedly. And 
the, the, the anti-gang legislation was amended in 2021 just an update to a few of the offenses. The, some additional offenses were added. And nobody during the amendment of the 2021 amendment never realized eh, but I assure you, so when local government election is, is announced fe fe February next year, because it have to keep by February next year, constitutionally speaking, all things being equal, and general election announced in 2025, um, thousands of people will be out there winding up them behind in an orange and green shirt and a full fist and a put up finger and a ring bell and a bead pot cover and a gyrate and a yam white rice and curry goat and a drink white rum. Now all nobody accountable. And then five years we still don't have to complain about the same thing them again. And when you talk about these things, you hear say. Uno na highlight nothing positive in a Jamaica and uh, uno a, a bearers of bad news and, and bad news wars and, and all manner of evil you know, brother. And you're anti-government and you are PNP this or if you PNP because the PNP you say all them to them is neither different because them been in a government too. And if you cost them your labor right, because you are some idiot about you and not realize that the country has suffer and people are suffer, but them always put politics before and after and beside everything. And one of the things we hurt me about these people, a lot of these people. Them, them, them hungry man. They know you feel fight and defend something that have kept you in hunger for all your life. If from me ban, me a support one political party and me still hungry. Why me did this? I support. I saw me like hungerness. I saw hungerness with me. I saw me wear hungerness well. I saw me wear misery well. Why on earth would me be so tribal? And partisan over this party where me are set me a, me a support from me ID and me knee. Cause my mother did a support you, my father, my grandfather, and my grandmother. And me still hungry and I suffer. And me still a come out here and defend this party like me not ashamed. You know not shame. Who not ashamed? Shame? Eh? We want to shame then. You have people out here who are stand supporters of both political party. And them are suffer, brother. This political organization that you are so strident in your support and so aggressive in defending, how come you're still hungry? How come you're still a suffer? After 30, 40 years of support. And me always, so when, me, when me see the conversations, and then me look on the profile of the P, as in their profile, and then me I say, then, then, me now nah get it, because for, 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 for the vocalness of this person, and the strongness that this person defend this political organization with, them should then reach your happy brother. But as election season come round, you see them fun and frolicking, Frivolous, foolish, and again, not get me wrong, you know, because I kind of sound like me, I contradict myself. I me tell you, say, the political process is important in a democratic nation. But when I try to bring balance to the thing, and I tell you, say, you can't just lock in on your political ideology that because at this you know, and them you support from when you are going to keep on, and you're still hungry, brother. You're free to support a political party, but when them do crap, or better yet, when them not do nothing, you can't say it and still live, you know? You're not going to die. If you're a supporter of the People's National Party, you can't look and say, whilst they were in government, they did not do enough to bring the country further than it they now, and you will still be alive. You can't be a supporter of the Jamaica Labour Party and say since they have been in government, the crime situation is, has become untenable. They have been involved in multiple scandals and accusations and allegations of cronyism and nepotism and misappropriation of taxpayers. You can say that and still live. It is okay to criticize the political party where you support. 
it is okay also to accept say, the political party where you don't support have done good things. Whilst they have done bad things, they have also done good things. But I know so we do politics both here. A one way and a the done way. And that irk me spirit. That's why I kind of get so cross when politics time come up more time. We are talking about politics. I don't want to hear nothing from them. You can support a political organization where you highlight the good that you have seen that they have done. But you can also point out the foolishness them what them do. As so we hold people responsible. We are different, 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 different. And here, here the main line of defense. Them did do it too. Remember when them did do it too. So because they did wrong, mean it is okay for your party to do wrong too. But what, me not even want to do politics or history, because you know, every night me come here and I lead them to that, and then my spirit just get cross. Talk about some things. We need, look here, we, 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 we nah, we nah, we nah all with political representatives accountable. They are accountable to us. We don't serve them. They're, we have, we have, we have, we have grown into the belief in this country that we serve politics. Serve what kind of which politician? Political represent. We select them. We elect them. They not select and elect. We at no point in time, you know. They are answerable to us, not to them, or not we to them. But I feel like I waste my time and I run up my blood pressure. And for a big man that's not healthy. You understand? I have been now going to bother run up my blood pressure. See? So I have, have so many mixed feelings to politics in this country. As I said, the politics, as in the movements and the chess movements, I, I'm telling you, I appreciate that for what it is. You understand? As somebody who studied political science to a level, Whilst in my course of study, I appreciate it for what it is. However, the fact that our politicians from both sides of the political divide has failed this country over and over and over and over and over and over, that irk my feelings. And when you talk, you are this and that. No, man, I talk because... I know say, we can't have better in this country and I want better for this country. I know because we have no political agenda or designs or affiliations or associations. I don't. Because when we are cuss, we don't care who the guy. And rest assured, if the people's national party for the next government, they're going to get it when they do foolishness. So this is not a political thing for me. It is a Jamaican thing, brother. We have to keep our political representatives in check. And when they don't perform, we need to get rid of them. You cannot keep a man in a power forever because oh, other a party of support. And you are suffering. How does that make sense? Me, me be not try to figure out these things. I me can't, me can't figure them out. That is why we need term limits for not only leaders, but also parliament in terms of MPs. And I've said before, I think that two terms is sufficient enough for a man to put their ideas forward and get programs in place to execute them. What, I, what I've said also is that there are circumstances where a third term may be valuable based on certain things. There will be things put in place to treat with that. It can be arbitrary. You understand? But this in a in a in a being leader of the government for 30, 40, 50 years. No make no sense when we're not progress, brother. MPs 
three terms max. If you can f- bring the level of your constituency to a level better than what you got it 15 years ago, you don't need to continue as an MP. See, man, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a constituency till them out for dead, brother. As a prime minister, two terms. And as me say, if it's a situation where the country is performing so well and some of the policies and programs that are being pushed by a particular political organization needs a few more years, then there has to be some form of... I, I mean, can't can the word committee and name it, you know. But some systems in place where can look at a particular administration and bring it to the people and say, okay, are you willing to extend the term of this administration for another term based on what is going on yea or nay? The people decide. Member of parliament, Three terms. If you can move the constituency forward in a three terms, you don't need you, you need to go. You understand? Some people feel like politics are them yard, them living a politics till the day them die. No man. Whatever you want to think about Jamaica, we have brilliant people in this country, you know. Brilliant people a yard and brilliant people in the diaspora who can bring the country along. And not just the people that we're in our politics now. We have, and we need to reach a stage where a political representative is impeachable. In a Jamaica, the only time a political representative can be removed from a constituency unless them resign one or at an election. We need systems in place where leaders and political representatives are made to answer to the people. They are answerable to the electorate. We need to start impeach political representatives. It can be a situation where a man do crap and the Prime Minister move him from one ministry, run on one part, run on one next part, breeze him off, and then rope him in back. Get look here. We're not serious about that, man. We just love chat. We're not serious. We're not serious about the country. We love excitement and we love politics. So when 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 election time comes around, everybody funny and frolicking. You understand what I say? Why at this stage in our existence there is no laws of impeachment for our political representatives? That is beyond me. Why as a country we are struggle in so many regards we are comfortable with people serving 15, 16, 20, 30 years as leaders in the country. That not make no sense to me, brother. How then are we going to have fresh ideas and renewal? Not only in spirit, but in personnel. And if they are duly elected and they are not performing or they have done things that goes against the principles of the office that they hold. They should be impeached. No, I'm, and, and, and Mr. Brown, me get what you are saying. No. But, but this is it now, Mr. Brown. And as I try explaining to you, look what. It's not, it's not left open, you know. I'm just saying, if the situation in the country after, after two terms... Is that so? Is of such where the the the, the 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 electorate is of the view that this administration has been performing so well in the two terms that they got, and programs and policies are on their way to completion, and they so feel that this administration would deserve a third term to execute and complete. Bring it to the people. So it's not an open thing. 
there are circumstances. So it's like when you, Lee Kuan Yew was building Singapore. So you, you was going, he Lee Kuan Yew, just two years, two term, and making guy yard. If you get to me, so where would Singapore be you now? So if, if you have a leader that is as transformational and a visionary, like a Lee Kuan Yew type of vibration, who is elevating Singapore from being singing poor to becoming one of the wealthiest nations in the world, are you then now going to, okay, because the law is so rigid that this now, you, you just serve your two years and your two terms and leave. I'm saying there are going to be circumstances where all things considered, bring it to the people. I mean, I say, a few men are going to decide it, you know, the people will decide if we are going to give this administration a third term because of the path that they are on is beneficial to the country and there are more benefits to be had if they are allowed to continue for a third term, let the people speak. If the people decide no, then no. So there are going to be systems in place to treat with when and how this thing can be done. So it can be open. I, mean, I understand that, man. I mean, get to what I say. Zine, but sometimes there are going to be a few points in your history where continuity would be a good thing. You understand? So we get it, so we want to be extreme and draconian. We get that. However, circumstances sometimes alter cases. And I am okay where in a situation where we have. Big up yourself, Richie. Me want to do that soon to you, know, but you know what I have a few more things. to come in if you talk about the new bail, the new bail act. Zin? And then one and two more things, I'm God. Zin? So me get it, say, in order to keep the thing flowing and moving, two term and dead. But as me say, if you come up, if you come up now with Well, me get that enough here, and me, as me say, me understand. But at, there is, in every country's history, there comes a transformational visionary leader. See, I don't think we, we reach this yet. I don't think we find a person yet. When we eventually get such a leader, where the country is heading in all the right directions, <clears throat> after two terms, and the populace look at it, and think to themselves and analyze the pros and the cons, and probably think that it would be better that instead of breaking the strides, because we know how we know how um what me did I say? I lose my chain of thought. I soon find it back. See? But if we have that that person, why not think about it? That's that's all I'm saying. It may never be that, but it 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 is my it's just my chain of thought here. But I am okay with term limits. But as it relates to a third term for a leader, I am not totally against that. If the situation presents itself and it makes sense. Because it can. I, I am certain of it. Zane, no matter which country, they will come at some point where they are blessed with a transformational visionary leader. You understand? And sometimes continuing. Oh, I know what I'm say. We know that in Jamaica and how politics work, the administration that is in power now, when a new administration takes the reins of, of government, a lot of the programs and policies that were being implemented by the outgoing government are stopped in their tracks, thrown out. And we start from scratch again, which makes no sense. So there's no there's no continuity. And we have to take out some people who are perform well in you know, some entities and agencies and put in with friend them or we, we promise political favors because them is a donor of our of our election campaign and we take out some bored people we are do very well and bring in with numbskull friend them and political backers them and the thing thrown out so we have to be realistic 
You understand what I say? We have to be realistic in how we treat with these things. Somebody mentioned America. America gained independence donkey years ago compared to our 1962. So American system of government is far more refined than ours and far more um, structured in terms of experience than ours. So we still... It is easy to say, oh, yeah, man, America do it. But then America is a quagmire to you, brother. You understand what I mean? Say? That, that America is right now, for want of a better term, for giving a shit show. Think about the last election and what go on this. Think about who now, for, for the better or worse, is planning to contest the next election in America. Again, people, for giving a shit show. So sometimes saying America is this, what we are used as, as a reference point, some, sometimes we better you know, do it now. You understand what I say? When you look at Biden's age and, and his lack of sharpness now and all of them something there, then you look at who may be running as the, the Republican candidate. Donald Trump, brother, like, uh, it, it is a shit show. If you're going to be honest about it. So, whilst yeah, re, nay, blay, eh, no, but we move on. Um, and, and that is my view. Again, my, uh, this is not law. <laughs> this is just my view. I live in Jamaica, my friend. Jamaica land I love. Land of food and water. And nothing we shouldn't shatter. You understand? Yes, I'm there. Upon the rock. You see me? Now, contract killer get life in prison for a 2013 murder. So this will lead me back into the discussion we did have earlier. Listen to this. Manchester Igla, Shavana Richards, who, while on the probe for the 2015 slaying of two brothers in that parish, was found to be the trigger man in a 2013 contract killing of a British, of British citizen, R12 Alfonso Joseph. Where would Jamaica be without America? That is besides the point now. That is not the point that we are making. Where would Jamaica be without everybody and anybody? That now has nothing to do with the fact that right now America is a shit show. So whether America, Jamaica would be nowhere without America, it no matter. As we speak now, politics... See, see the government locked down the other day? You understand? Right now, politically speaking, when you look at all who is involved, America... The land of the free and the home of the slave, brave, is a shit show, politically speaking. And if you're going to be honest with yourself, so in no matter what Jamaica would be without America, on a political note, right now, America is that to me just say. And that, whilst it's my opinion, the information is out there to back up what me I say. I won't say it is facts, you know, but the information is out there to suggest that America is what I say it is now politically speaking. So whether we would be here, there, or anywhere without America, that is besides the point. That I know what we are talking about. We're not talking about what America has done for Jamaica, what have you. We are talking about America now as a political force. So let us not lose sight of what we are talking about. You understand? America is where everyone aspires to go. No, sir, don't do that. Don't say everyone. You understand? They're not everyone. I don't really aspire to go to America. If I had that aspiration, I would have been there. You understand? Not everyone aspires to go to America, sir. That is not true. You understand? As a very, you cannot qualify or quantify. Many people want to go to America, but not everyone, sir. You understand? America is not... Make we move on. Big up America for what it is and has been. Yeah. And probably will be. You see me? But I am, I'm, I, uh, America don't frighten me. While there are some artists there who want to interview one of them time, it is, it is. Sir, I would never live in America. Just put it that way there. Jamaica, my thing there. You yeah, understand? The man said that sound butto. But then, so, oh, so why you are say sound good, but why next man I say sound like a butto? Let me not understand. Brother, I know your opinion around the world, bro. So me hear what you are say, 
But then, you know, if you hear me I say that, but that me I say, America, sir, politically right now, because it look like it never hear, is a shit show. As a matter of fact, Jamaica is more stable politically than America right now. Think, be, think, think about that for what it is. Jamaica, Jamaica, you know, politically is more stable than America right now. Let that soak in, bro. So you are okay to see America as God's greatest gift to man. But it is not for me, sir. Woman is the greatest gift to man for me, sir. Not America. You understand? So you are okay to love up America. Zane. And that's fine. But America is not for me. That's all I'm saying. So I value your opinion, but then you call my opinion Boto. Brother, I'm watching news every day, local and international news, bro. I see the things that we are going on, Uncle Sam, bro. <coughs> Them are no secret. People there suffer just like a Jamaica, and in some cases worse than Jamaica. It's not the land of milk and honey flowing from the sides of the mountain, sir. People have to go there, go work, or just like anywhere else. People are poor there, just like every, anywhere else. Some people can't find a house to live there, just like anywhere else. Some people can't find food, just like anywhere else. People are killed in one another there, just like anywhere else. So what is so great about this America that me are here about, you know? Not saying it never was great one time. But me not sure about now. You understand? And if you are dear and you are happy dear, that is fine. Big up yourself, man. And many people will go there and be happy. That is fine too. Nothing wrong with that. But America is not God's greatest gift to man, sir. Woman is that. So me not know. But let me continue. Because I say, man say me a boat to come and tell him, say, America is not the greatest. <laughs> yeah, we don't understand. We don't understand. We don't understand. We, we, do, we, don't understand. We, we don't get it. We don't get it. You understand? Right now, sir, t thousands and thousands of Jamaicans are yard that live better than thousands and thousands of Americans in America. Don't do that. Don't do that, man. Things are all bad here. Yeah, you know? A lot of bad things here. But you have people here who are doing extremely well for themselves and them family. Building generational wealth. Don't forget that, sir. They only get about this Jamaica like at the worst. It's not the worst place. Don't get me started now. Me move on to. Mm. You understand? So, the 44-year-old Joseph, who had retired... To Jamaica from Britain with his wife was shot during an home invasion in September of 2013 by Richards and another assailant who is reportedly still on the run. Now, Supreme Court Judge Justice Grace Henry Mackenzie, in sentencing Richards to life behind bars, was with eligibility for parole after 34 years and seven months on Friday, said the murder had all the, hallmark, the hallmarks of a contract killing and was akin, in her view, to capital murder. You know, capital murder, you can get life in, you can get the death sentence for it. See? Or you can be put on death row for Capital murder includes murder for hire, murder in the course of certain felonies, burglary, robbery, arson, sexual offenses, murder of a member of a specified class of persons acting in the course of their duties, the security forces, correctional officers, judicial officers, such as judges and police, a person carrying out constabulary functions, witnesses, jurors, or justices of the peace, <coughs> and multiple murders. So those are what is constituted as capital murder. And capital murder is what you can be sentenced to death for, as per the laws in Jamaica. I think so, eh. All right, so capital punishment remains on the book. Zane, in Jamaica, but may only apply in certain aggravated murder convictions. 
there have been no executions since 1988 after the Pratt and Morgan case. Now, Justice Henry Mackenzie, in assessing the case, said she had identified as aggravating factors the nature and seriousness of the offense, the devastating impact on the family, the fact that the murder was committed during a home invasion and was carried out with a firearm and an accomplice. Further aggravating factors, she said, was the forced entry, the fact that the deceased did not know Richards, the evidence pointing to it being a contract killing, premeditation, and the fact that Richards pat on Joseph after he shot him and killed him. Murder by any stretch of the imagination is a very serious offense. A life has been lost. A life has been cut short. The impact has been devastating. The family of Mr. Joseph will never be able to enjoy his company ever again. She said, noting that murder crimes have escalated in Mandeville in recent times and permeated the island. This case involves a home invasion, and from all indications, the home was forcibly entered. Your home is your sanctuary. It should be a safe space. He was not invited, but forced his way there and committed this heinous crime. The deceased did nothing to deserve this. There is no proof of any history between them. This crime has all the hallmarks of a contract killing and, in my view, could have been capital murder. Right, Zane? The judge declared, adding, this egregious feature took the case to another level, stating that all these aggravating factors far outweigh the mitigating factors, the judge, from a starting point of 32 years, given the aggravating factors, added 15 years, taking the total to 47 years, from which she deducted four years for the mitigating factors and eight years and five months for a time already served. Richards, leaving 34 years and seven months, well, already served by Richards, leaving 34 years and <coughs> seven months. So the sentence of the court is that the accused served life imprisonment and that the accused is not eligible for parole. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Until having served 34 years and seven months behind bars, she stated. Now, Joseph's wife, who gave evidence during the trial, was effusive in her praises for the judge and the prosecution. I rate the judge. Every aspect of what happened that night, she covered. She that night she covered, she detailed, and she fairly mentioned the two favorable social statements. I never gave up. I was determined to make that wrong right, she told reporters. So the Crown, in outlining the allegation, said fortuitously during the investigation into the shooting deaths of two brothers, O'Shane Levy, 21 years old, and 27-year-old Anthony Bailey of Highway Drive in Greenvale in 2015, and acquaintances upon learning that Richards had been taken into custody for those murders, told the police about his boast that he had been the one who killed Joseph. So after him killed the man, him tell him, somebody say, that him killed them, and then they had charged him for two other murders already. Richards reportedly bragged that he got money to kill a man in Manchester, and even took the individual to the house where Joseph and his wife had lived. Wow. The now 33-year-old Richards, who spent his formative years in St. Catherine before relocating to Clarendon and then Manchester, was convicted for the slaying in May of this year after a jury trial. Now, Richards is scheduled to also stand trial for the killing of the two brothers at a later date, the observer was told. It, and, and real judge, that cannot be real, yeah? But I want to tell you, sir, if this brother here was accused of being in a gang and, and tried on the, as, as a gangster and the murder there and them two brothers here were him on, he going to serve a year for one of them because the anti-gang legislation must be... Yes, you're, yes, you're just... Yes, a joke thing, man. A joke thing, man. So it come back to what I did talk about. So that's why I have that story to back up my thing when I did talk about. That's how we build lessons and, and things. You understand what I said? Now, as I said earlier, in fairness to the Ministry of Justice, they have been trying to fix a few things in recent years. However, so many things need fixing that even if them fix one little thing around there, so the pipes still start leak big around there. So I saw the thing set up. So they have treated with the Firearms Act and they have amended and updated the Firearms Act. One, they have now amended and updated 
the Bail Act. There are discussions that the mandatory minimum sentence for murder should be updated and passed into law. So them treating with that. So them might do some things, you know. But say there's so much, so much things to do right now. There's there's so many things to treat with. So it would be unfair to say, cause we love saying you know, nothing now go on. That I'm not true. You understand what I say? Probably when me was younger and more fiery, me also said that too. Say nothing now go on. But I as I say, I read the papers, I watch the news. So I know that some things are going on, but enough now go on. I think that would be a, a fair statement. See? And some of the things that we are going on are not readily newsworthy for some people. Them no sensational. Them 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 not them not them not hype. You understand? Them not get enough views. Even mainstream media don't share a lot of these things sometimes because it don't it don't influence them numbers. That, that is the nature of the beast. You understand? And I don't think that these government agencies do enough as it relates to public education of the things that they are doing. So people don't know. So it is easy for people to say, nothing now go on. So in truth, some things are going on, but enough now go on. I think it is the best way of saying it. See? The new Bail Act addresses witness intimidation. I haven't seen the written act as yet. Um, I am yet to see that, but I've seen bits and pieces in the papers. We want the whole idea. If you read, the issue of criminals intimidating witnesses or having them killed while on bail is one of the main issues addressed by the revised Bail Act, which was approved in the Senate on Friday. Because the truth is that we have had many stories where we share here, so where men out on bail for murder are rearrested for murder or killed by the police after they commit murder and all of them something. We know so many cases fall through because witnesses go missing or witnesses are murdered. That's enough secret about it and we know that. That is why some people don't really readily in the witness business. You understand? The Bail Act of 2023, which repeals and replaces the existing act of two, the, 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 the Bail Act that exists before this one was modified, was... Passed into law in year 2000. In year 2000, me still the high school. You know how long that, that from the devil was a boy, you know? 23 years ago that. Look how the thing evolved and changed since. And this law just a change. Leader of government business. In the upper house, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, in her closing remarks following a four-hour long debate, said preventing the intimidation of witnesses by intimidatory, extortionate, and murderous criminals is one of the main aims of the bill. It is important for us to have a stronger system that works, that protects communities, that protects witnesses, that protects witnesses, that has people feeling comfortable to come forward and say what they know because a criminal against whom they will give evidence is not out on bail, she said. That is one of the things that the society wants, that the people of Jamaica want. That want, they want to feel that the system works for them. That is one of the main aims of the bill. And it is one of the things that the people of Jamaica demand of a justice system that works. Now, Johnson Smith, who is also Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister, said the administration feels confident that the transparency that is being brought by the bill does very well in respect to the duty of the state to ensure the wider security of the society, the right to life of the wider society, as well as the right to freedom and dignity, as may be held by persons accused of criminality. The bill was reviewed by a joint select committee of the House of Parliament, and the new law will permit a grant of bail at three stages, pre-charge stage, post-charge stage, and post-conviction in defined cases. So you can be granted bail before being charged, after being charged, or even after conviction. Because some people, after being convicted, they have intentions of appeal, and whilst they are out, whilst they are appealing, some people seek bail during that process. I have seen it. So I haven't, I mean, I know the details of the new bail act. I suppose that will become available in the coming days. But, um, yeah, there's also in the new bail act a $1 million fine for tampering with tracking device 
So apparently, as, as a part of the new bail act, people will be fitted with tracking devices while out on bail. I don't know if it is everybody who is out on bail or selective people based on the nature of the crime they are accused of that is out. As I said, I don't see the, I don't see the bill, I don't see the, the law yet, the written thing yet. So I don't know, I don't hear yet. But if you are fixed with a tracking device and out on bail and you tamper with it, you may be fined a million dollars or find a million dollars and spend time in jail. In making far-reaching changes, Johnson Smith said that a number of things were considered, including internationally accepted best practices, changes that have taken place in the society, and the scale and characteristics of criminal conduct in Jamaica. The sole amendment to the bill was an adjustment to the clause, well, to clause 8, and the original version said so, what constitutes an offence when a defendant causes the removal of an electronic tracking device that is part of the arrangement for a bail to be granted. However, the clause was expanded to state that a defendant who without law, ex, well, well, without lawful excuse, removes an electronic tracking device or causes the removal of an electronic tracking device or the impairment of any function of an electronic device contrary to the requirement imposed on that defendant commits an offence. The punishment for breaching this provision upon summary conviction before a parish court is a fine not exceeding a million dollars or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding one year or both the fine and the prison time. And the Bail Act of 2023 will, among other things, allow for the... Yeah, Mr. Dataridian. So, so I am just sharing the information that is available thus far. The, the, the amendments to the Bail Act was passed into law yesterday. So that info, the information surrounding the new act will become available. I am looking forward to learning and sharing it and discussing it and them something there. Because we have spoken about bail being granted to people who have reoffended and and killed multiple people what people what people's people while out and bail and so so as me say it is it is it is a bit of a stretch when we say nothing are going because truth is some things are happening you understand at the rate at which it needs to happen no zane are we 10 years behind in many regards yes but Things are being done on a slow, allegedly pace sometimes, but more needs to be done. And that is what me I try to communicate. You understand? I'm not going to be unfair and, and be one of those persons. Who, cause I read the stories. I see them. I see, see things that happen at the pace that is needed now, at the frequency that is required no. with the vision needed in many instances no. You understand? But some things are happen. Um, and that are that. Yeah, me, 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 me have to defend. <laughs> me just think about the conversation I have earlier. But nobody feel like it's a true yard. Look, me have to defend yard. You understand? We, 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 know, we, know, we know the worst. We're far from the best. But we're not the worst. You understand what I say? But where would Jamaica be without America? Where would America be without Jamaica and all of the other countries that we got Billy? Ask a question. You understand? You know what Jamaican contribute meaningful to the development of America, sir? I do that something there. Like we are worse. We're not that. We're not the best. And and, and if we go to, you know. But but not do that. You see me? Eh. Yeah. Everybody want to go America. Everybody aspire to go to wish America. Man, go on here, man. God's child. Lady Antoinette, it's good to see you. You understand? Um I mean, from his baby. Does she realize that the baby girl was her daughter's sister? We talk, boy, I mean, I know, I mean, I know, so. You understand? But yeah, Pete, I'll cut this up. I mean, I'll mean, stay here all night. I saw you going to the, the mountains, I'll look at things kind of rub me around with the Jamaica Port Service. And me does, you know what I mean? I me, 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 me appreciate certain things. Yeah, man, but that, that's okay, Mr. Davis, man. That's all right. I am, I am, I am that. See? So I saw a thing go. Yeah, some people just a giant, um, you know, Rosie. That's how you think said, you know what I mean? But yeah, peeps, big up on yourself. As some of them things they are going on a yard. Um, Kerry, Kerry, my day I chat from 6.45. You know how long that? I can't even count so long. How much? I can't even count that long, bro. 
You understand? So big up yourself, you know, Father, Father Davis. No hard feelings, but we have to correct you once when them say something sometime. You understand what I mean? I say, um, mm. So that's okay if I'm sad and, you know, the boot thing. And, but we're good. We are, we are, at Jamaica, we say we are defend that. You see me? Yeah, man. Um, in the come probing three police fatal shootings. I not really realize I still have this. The Independent Commission of... And Kerry, this is not for you, and I just become a seat. The Independent Commission of Investigations in the com says it is investigating three separate incidents of fatal police shooting all on the 5th of October. Indicom says three men were killed in the incidents. They have been identified as 27-year-old Ricardo Pinnock, 24-year-old Courtney Thompson, and 39-year-old... Um, I need a Simon. I covered the one in the news yesterday. The killings reportedly occurred in the communities of Burnside Valley, Red Hills in St. Andrew, and Grateful Hill District, and Old Arbor Road, both in St. Catherine. Now, Indicom says three firearms were recovered, one from each scene. Um, I need a Simon was a licensed firearm holder. Apparently, police stop him and him sitting. We don't know what's going on, and him and the police and start fighting, and him drive him gun and start shoot and then shoot him. Based on the information, we don't know why we reached there, so with all of that. So, Indicom says three firearms were recovered, one from each scene, of which one was a licensed firearm which belonged to one of the deceased men. I just tell you who. They are appealing to anyone with the information on the three fatal shooting incidents to contact the commission. The original makers of video footage of the incidents are especially encouraged to contact the commission to assist with the investigation inquiries. Now, Indicom says it is inve its investigations involve the processing of all incident scenes, processing of the firearms of all individual involved members of the, the constabulary and the three recovered firearms. And the bodies of the deceased were all photographed and their hands swabbed for a gunshot residue. According to Indicom, as of October 5th, 114 people have been killed by the security forces this year. Hmm, yeah. Peeps, as I said, this way I cut it. Remember, I'm streaming about three times since weekend. How much more do I me talk, sir? I am, I am tired. Zane, um, so big up on yourself, peeps. You know, I think we, 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 we talk about these things. We hope them there's some change, and, and, and the people who are able to make these changes. And as I said, rest assured th that some of these people listen and watch. They won't, I, or them have their people doing so. You understand? So sometimes we feel like things never fall upon deaf ears. Sometimes they are not. Um, and we we hope that, you know, out of the ramblings what we do sometimes, some some workable solutions come out sometimes. I, I sincerely hope that Dr. Chang and who needs to fix the the, 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 the anti-gang legislation will get to that in collaboration with the Ministry of Justice very soon. You understand? Tomorrow I'll call <laughs> Tomorrow I'll call in. All right, do it. Me a year still. Me not commit to that, but we, we, we see what go on. You see me? All right, Kerry, me hear you. Um, me don't know about that still, but big up on yourself, peeps. We appreciate the continued support. You understand? As I say, I want to make that something I work in. Because we can't come here every night, come chat, 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 and we are talk to ourselves. But we give way, provide an audience, and provide interaction and and, and, and um, engagement, even though sometimes, like, like m m Mr. America, just Captain America, just now, some things are more time, yeah, say, I'm yeah. not depend on that. You understand? I'm not, me not depend on that. So, but that's how I think we have our opinions and, and, and we share ours. As I say, at no point in time, you have to accept my opinion. I agree with my opinion for that matter. There will be times when you share your opinion and I don't agree with it and won't accept it. It's just a natural order and flow of life. You understand? We can we can we can respect each other's views without becoming uncivilized and disrespectful. You understand? Him the boat and make look nice enough, but him the him the further away from, from his studio. Yeah, but if you are so good, him the boat in the summer boy place, man. You see me? But him is alright. You understand? Um but we give thanks, peace, big up on yourself. Jaja, ja, Captain America. DJ, big up yourself, you know, bro. You know, we appreciate the support of the ones. Them. Lady Roxanne Simpson, Dwight, BM Pressy, Calligraphy, 
You understand? All of the people in the business. Rosie, big up yourself and I'm a rich friend. You understand? Yes, my next rich friend in Ghana, but I'm rich. Kim T, S. Lewis, Mr. Michael Davis, Mr. Captain America, big up yourself. God's Child, Moonlight, big up yourself. Andre Brown, all of the people in my car. Richie, my next rich friend that you know. Chanel H, Miss Karen Roberts, you all of my friend them rich. Daniel, me a richness pound of life. Diaz Isaac, him rich too. You understand? Mr. Michael Davis, him rich too. He's Captain America. You understand? <laughs> Kerry Rich and them people. Everybody rich. You see me? Peace. Big up on yourself. We're there. See, we we'll talk again soon. I now promise on a Sunday evening, which is tomorrow evening, which is a few hours away, which is now. You understand? But we'll see. S. Lewis, big up on yourself. I appreciate the discussion and the conversation and the divergent views and opinions and take and perspective. I am I am very saddened at the development around Miss Tashina Patterson and her young ten month old daughter Saraya Paulwell. Really sad. Yeah, and I said I say, Miss Millicent, how are you? You're very late, man. Hope you're okay now. Hope Mr. Mac. If you might listen, big up yourself. Hope you're alright too. You yeah, understand what I say? Eh, I don't know how many people them from a taller time till this time. You yeah, understand? So big up on yourself, peeps. Have a blessed Sunday. And if you don't go to church, you know what? Say a little prayer for me. You understand? So we, we accept good prayers. You see me? And thing. Kerry, as you tell me that 10 minutes ago. You understand? You can't count. So we're there. Um, oh, Richie said, take away the crime. The wink as a paradise. I've got a long time instead that I'm gone, you know. Thing. So I don't know. Kerry said, I'm stay. But I don't know. As a matter of fact, I want to tell you, say. It's late now, you know, but I'm not even eating dinner since evening. You understand? I need to go at Drees, look, drink the tea and belch like, and then go to bed. Yeah, I was listening silent. Okay, Miss Mark, big up yourself every time. You understand? You know, say I love. Right, trade cross the board, as Buru Bantan said. Peeps, have a blessed Sunday. Zane, get some rest for the people that we have a party tonight. You know it go. Moderation over moderation. You understand? And I'll see you soon. What good? Step with ya. See if trouble upon the gravel. I will just sit there with me and look for. Oh. Uh. Yeah, this is nature. Ellis representing for extra class. See, we teach them. Little piece of my. So, Chelsea. We're not even too, too talk about Chelsea yet, you know. Because they have bow and good 10 games that come up after that we talk. So, we see you go after that. Teacher, I want to hear a news anchor. She alright, you know, she just don't read the news anymore, bro. You understand? I mean, explain that one long time stream again. You know. But I mean, kind of try to read the news, you know. Um, it wasn't working out number-wise. Um, when she read, she, she, beautiful person, uh, did professionalism and polish to the channel and the news. You understand? But the numbers, it is a numbers game, it is a business, and it just wasn't making sense. You understand? It it was in, instead of taking care of itself, I had to be taking care of it and um, I couldn't continue with that. You understand? So we just did have to do what we have to do. You see what I'm saying? One of them things. We hope we had we had hoped that it worked out because of what it brought to the channel. But truth is people weren't watching. We had news episodes where that were three thousand, three thousand five hundred. I mean there are a few good episodes where we had a couple of 20 or thousands and a one forty thousand and maybe a one thirty thousand. But generally it was in the three to five thousand, seven thousand range that couldn't take care of nothing at all. And you know what the thing goes. So we just had to do what we had to do. You know, when I read the news, an average 25, 30,000 people watch it. Me have got about three, four episodes where 100,000 people watch. 80,000, 90,000, 70,000. So I don't know, if people are good as like me to you. Um, but I loved Abby for what she brought to the platform. But it wasn't making sense number-wise. And, and, and money-wise. So yeah, hope that answer that question for everybody because a lot of people have asked. It's a business, so you know what I think of. Business is a business and we have bills to pay and people to pay, you know what I mean? So I saw you go, but I mean, I think I'm improving a little bit. I mean, I do my thing and people them watch it and we give thanks and it is still the cleanest, most professional looking sounding news 
outside of mainstream media in Jamaica. And I am proud to say that. You understand? I am very proud to say And it's not a boast. It's not a brag. I have put a lot of money, time, and energy in building it where it, to where it's at. You understand? And I am very proud of it. And I'll say it again. The best looking and sounding news on social media outside of mainstream media in Jamaica. And I am willing to stand by that. Teach them. Make sure the message reach them. Yeah, man, for the big bad, teach them. So, and we so ought to know. Yeah, man, she's nice. She's a I couldn't tell her nothing otherwise. You understand? Mm. Cookie mama, big up yourself, you know. You understand? Um, um, I can't speak to that, you know, Mr. Brown, but maybe she had tried there before. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she should try. I don't know. For the youth, them out of the road. Listen, what I go on. I'm going to play this back from the top. Play two tunes before me left. Entertain them, educate them, and teach them all the while and never stop what you're doing. You're doing a good thing. Jamaica, we are want you back. Are we pleased? Are you pleased? Not me. Senseless killing. Captain America, you're pleased, sir? Oh, no, no. We no want no more bloodshed. We no want no more youths dead. Jamaica, Jamaica, we love, bring it back to what it too much youngsters and thugs and AKs and slow. Take a look at the rainbow. Plenty sorrows and pain. You can't make life and no still a take life. Say you a murderer, one day you must pay the price. Life is so hard. Every day we see goals. You gotta live it up right. Are you wicked? Don't know. If it's not by police, then it's by gunman. That's the way it goes. Living in the ghetto. Talk to them, Gandhi. Teach them. Don't in the ghetto where we burn and grow. No, 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 daddy. I just remember one we know. Every day she say, me son, protect your life. From fires and blood suckers, what day and night? Like them say them are friend, them are no friend. Make the right choice. Make sure you listen to your mama fights. Now try for this, my mama, true, you're walking with your crew. Make me mama cry, and does the lightning for you. But if you diss me, you can get wet. That's all right, because I love we and chant every day and night. We no want no more bloodshed. We no want no more youths dead. You look at Jamaica where we love. Bring it back to what it was. Too much gangsters and dogs and AKs and suits. Take a look at the rainbow. Let the stars and rainbow. You can't make life and no no still a take. Lady Bernadine Bowen, good night. Miss Marcia Webb. Life is so hard. Every day we see goals. You gotta live it up right. Are you wicked? Gondo. Right, Gandhi, big up yourself. Teach them, uplift them, educate them, motivate them. For the youths, I'm out there you now. Elevate them. That message that we are leaving for doing here. You know what I mean? Terry Gansy, the outlaw, the irony is real. Role of fear, My favorite Terry Gansy tune mix. Touch some Strange, huh? Touch some issues economical, plus judicial. A lot of people are stressed out. So emotional. Let it go. Even though that Terrigans represent. Teach them. Oh, Teach oh, them. Oh, 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 oh. What do you them need? Yep, yep. Little advice. advice. To be a better man in life. Just a little advice. advice. Gun is not the only choice. Oh no, little advice. With what is suffering the night. Tell them, teach them. Just a little advice. So when you do what you do, think twice. Yeah. I know the poor is going through such hard times. No, it seems living as a poor is a crime. No youth, I spoken, but men. 
I want to tell you, say, you know, a Daniel link live, you know, the interview just not at me yet. But the link they make from a taller time, man. The link live, it just the interview you no know, go on it, you see me? Little advice to be a better man in life. Yo, me a song like me can sing. Little advice. Me know the suffering not nice. Reach them. Just a little, little advice. God is that the only. I mean, I only if I don't play it, line up in our year, what go on? If my them not stop with the dub plate, them pan the TV track. So, them are throw up as copyright in our stream. I don't know, I talk to him and him, but boy, I don't mean, you know. So, the one that we play, the one that we not copyright, we not, we not, we not treat with no copyright, you see. But we have a few, man. We have a couple agents that score. We have. We want a few Jamil, we have a couple more nature we can play, we have a couple Dewey and Stevens where we have pay problem. Yeah man, I have Sasko dub plate man, but then it been on, me tell, I tell Sasko, say brother, don't do the track them on the TV track. I want a dry track I want him say yes teach, that me again and, and he man give me the same thing and me tell him why. It is good to so, I must have Saskatoon play. I'm going to ask my brother. 